podcast, Truth Seekers podcast. Buckle up, everyone. We're going to talk aliens, UFOs, ghosts, spiritual and paranormal from all of the three moons. On your wildest dreams. Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. Hi there, guys. My name is Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Excited, delighted to be with you guys. Again, as always, working through these uh, technical difficulties, I find it kind of fitting. Um, I sent out the email for uh, my guest today to to join the live stream, and he was having problems getting into it. So I was going to try to call him and walk him through the process. I go to call him, and my phone screen breaks. Like, I can't touch anything on the phone. I can't restart the phone. I don't know what it's doing. Uh, so the phone starts tripping out on me. And uh, so I'm trying to find out all these different alternatives. I'm trying to call him on the computer. But then again, I don't have his number because I can't access it in my phone. Um, I tried to do the voice to speech. I said, okay, Google, call Spirit of Truth. And he has several different numbers listed from changing his numbers over the years. So I didn't know which one to call. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to figure it out and work it out, man. But finally, <laughs> you know, it's about probably about what 25, 30 minutes in. He finally joins the stream, and uh, yeah. So we're gonna make this happen, and I think it's fitting because I wrote down all these notes and stuff that that I want to talk to him about, and most of what I want to talk to him about has to deal with technology, and it seems fitting when we need it. Technology's messing up on us today. So anyway, we roll with the punches. We're here. We're gonna make it happen. Get this spirit of. Uh, uh, confusion and uh, trying to make things happen off of me because I was it was so funny because this is how it happens it's like a roller coaster I was I spent some time in worship this morning right before just getting ready getting my spirit right before we get into this conversation and then the phone breaks and I can't get it happen so it's like you know it's like in the midst of all that holding on to your peace everything's around you is falling apart tearing up but you still got peace in the midst of it. So that's our inheritance, man. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, the peace in the midst of all of this stuff and how do we maintain that peace that we have. So we're going to get into that here in a few minutes. I want to say a huge thank you to uh, everybody who supported my work via Patreon. Uh, you guys are the enablers. This show was your fault. You made this happen. Thank you so much. Um, you guys are co-creators with me uh, bringing us to the table. So shout out to you guys for believing in my work and partnering with the ministry that God has given me. And a shout out to you guys for seeing it as such, man. It's more than a talk show. We're really dealing with uh, spiritual warfare and alchemy and things like that throughout these conversations. So thank you guys for partnering with me and believing in the vision. So if you'd like to support, head on over to patreon.com backslash truthseeker. Uh, for supporting, you get access to my entire discography, 
200 plus songs, uh, extra podcasts, our Thursday night community aspect to what we're building here, which is the Thursday night school of the mystics, Sunday morning seer class, bunch of other really cool stuff. My meditations, all that patreon.com backslash true seeker. And, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff over there. I'm almost done with my book. The book is almost here. Um, you guys will be notified as soon as that comes out. Patreon will be the first people to uh, get all the information on that. But, yeah, check it out. Without further ado, we're going to get it in. We're going to get into the, today's discussion. This is my second interview with this brother here. So if you uh, haven't heard the first one, make sure you go back and check that one out. But there were some technical difficulties on that one as well. But uh, without further ado, my guest, Spirit of Truth, brother, welcome to the podcast again. What's happening? What up? What up? Thank you, bro. Appreciate you having me. For sure, man. How's it been on your side this morning? Like I was all good until like we're trying to make it happen and trying to push play. You've have you just been rolling with the punches. How's it been on your side? Yeah, I've been good, man. You know, just I don't really have any hiccups today. Not yet, at least. Well, it did take you a while to figure out how to join the chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was think I was you know I didn't know if I needed a code or because I clicked the link. In the email, and then I was like, you know, I think I think I sent you a pic. Oh, you didn't see it. I sent you a picture. I couldn't. I, you, I like, seen it, but I couldn't access it. That was the thing. Uh, I couldn't look at the picture. <laughs> I seen you yeah, sent we, me one. We here, you know. We. You yeah, know, we, we're here. We're gonna get it in, man. We got a lot to talk about. There's a lot going on. Just like the last time we spoke, I actually went back and listened to a, a good portion of it, and we covered some good ground on that last one about, uh, you know, what was going on and. Um, uh, some some deep stuff, and but now there's even more. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna cover this ground, and uh, we're celebrating your new album that just dropped on 9/11. What we've become. I've been jamming that for the last couple days, and uh, you asked me to do a review and give you some critiques and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna talk about a little bit like what I've picked up off of it, kind of promote it because we, you know, what I'm saying you good people and uh, we, we family, and uh, and I think it's a good album. So I want to I want to kind of give some critiques and got some questions and stuff about the album too. So we'll, we'll get into some of that. Um, for those of you guys who don't know, Spirit of Truth is featured on the I Am song, which we finally did that video, and it, I feel like it came out phenomenal. Everybody in the community sending in video clips of them singing, rapping the verse. Was that cool to see when, with the final product and actually seeing people spitting your verse back to you and know it better than you? You know what I'm saying? That shit was beautiful, bro. Like, that shit touched my heart, you know? Like, the whole... seemed like you really hit the vision you had for it, you know? And I, the people I showed that to were like, man, this is... That's the unity, bro. That's what it's all about, man. That's, that's why I do this music, you know? Yeah. So it was, it was a blessing to see that. Yeah, the people feel it. And um, about your new album, too, I was supposed to be uh, featured on a track. It just didn't work out. Um, I do owe you a song, though, so we're going to make that happen. I'm, I'm going to do something for for your project or just put it out there but i definitely owe you a verse man and i'm gonna come through sorry for not being able to make the deadline on the album and stuff like that but uh we're gonna make that happen so i mean you don't owe me nothing brother but I, i'll take what i can get you know so yeah i think i think we we got some good stuff in the works you know? yeah for sure man one one good de deed deserves another man you know what i'm saying you came through for me with a, a beautiful verse on the album and i don't want to give you anything less you know what i'm saying for yours so uh we're, we're, we're gonna make it happen for sure and on my on my book on my end i owe you a verse so let's put it that way but uh as far as like the subject matter of this new album dude what we've become um and even what I what I named this episode, so I don't know if you've seen it, but uh, artificial intelligence, AI, merging with machines, right? Spirit of Truth podcast. Like, um, I feel like that's the concept of the album. And even with the artwork, there's an eye on it. But looking into the eye, it's like a machine. And it's a lot of talk about like, you know what I'm saying? The spirit of the age and what's going on right now, the, the climate of politics and really how you know, feel like we're moving away from the earth, from spirituality, things like that, and moving towards more of where like, you know, we're merging with machine. And and so for me, I felt like your album was uh, uh, almost like a last cry for help. Or like I, or, or, and then at the same time, and I told you so, 
you almost saying like almost like a backhanded look i told you this was coming you know what i'm saying because we're headed there right it's getting worse it's, and, and so your album's called what we've become and it's 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 even deeper like what what we're still yet to be what we're becoming right like we're continuing to merge with ai and the chips and all of this kind of stuff so what was the inspiration about like just the climate and things like that with the ai stuff bro as you're speaking, there's so many things coming to my mind. I know, so, right? You no. Know, <laughs> um, I just want to start off. You said something like a final cry, you know, and, and one of my songs, I say, you know, this is a war cry. For, um, I wanted to release it on 9-11. I kind of rushed that release date because I feel like it's a 9-1-1, you know, and that date, uh, like numbers have significance to me. My, la my last album was dropped in a very significant num uh, date, you know, with the numbers lined up and um i it's hard bro like at the end of the day the the goal is to not put too we talked about this yesterday not put too much energy into you know you know is is the earth flat or is it you know is the devil really doing this and the masonic people doing that and eating humans and all this you know and the the real goal is to bring people to jesus you know and and Sometimes, you know, when we see or when, we're, when the reality is brought up to our face of what we're, we become in, um, it kind of makes you think and second guess, like, damn, do I really support this movement? Do I really want to engage in these things? And, you know, the album not only highlighted what we're becoming with the merging of AI and stuff, but I also like, I don't know if you noticed, but the like the first couple tracks kind of highlighted a growth for me and kind of talked about the struggle I came from and what I grew into because of that struggle. So I wanted to include what we become, what I've become and what some of the people I know have become through the struggle and through the darkness, you know, bringing us to the light and stuff like that. And that's why you got songs like Triumphant and Keep It On, you know. Um, but on the other side, do you know what that machine is in that eye? That's a specific machine. Was it uh? There was I got I have two that come to mind. One is the, the it was it the Chinese one, the the big Chinese supercomputer, or the Hedron Collider. It's got to be one of the two, right? Yes, it is the LHC. It's the Large Hadron Collider. And you know, in my studies, man, CERN comes up left and right. It just came up again, and I was like, man, you know, I just learned that the dude who created the World Wide Web, www, I forgot his name, he created it at CERN. You know, CERN. Um, they do these satanic dances, but I actually worked for CERN's sister laboratory. It's called Fermilab, you know, and they have their little particle colliders there. And I learned a lot about what they're doing. And uh, it's really, really deep and it's really satanic and shit. And, you know, it, the people running the show, man, are just, the hearts ain't right. And that's why we need people like us out here to speak a message of encouragement and, and, and you know, spread the truth to people who don't realize what they're engaging in. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, on the album, man, there's definitely growth. Um, uh, as far as you presenting the problem, right? There's a lot of like, you know, just letting people know, look, look, this is what we've become and, and you don't even know it. So let me, and we've, you know, we've seen this coming, right? Many of us have Sears and people just kind of know what's up. We've seen it, you know, coming out. And, uh, but at the, the the thing about the album, it because it's definitely like a concept album. It has a theme. I think the AI, the end of the world, Armageddon, and you know, transgenders and all this kind of stuff that you you've talking about repeatedly. But it's a concept album because you're presenting a problem. But then the last two tracks, and it, but it's sprinkled throughout the whole album. But the last two tracks kind of bring it home. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or wrapping this up. It's like look. The only way out of this, the only way to find peace in the midst of this, whatever we're building, is through Christ. And that's throughout the whole album. So it definitely presents a problem, but gives this solution as well. So kudos on that, that I noticed. Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually got goosebumps when you said it because you caught it. You know, you caught that last ending. and the last, I Yeah. I mean, I try to do the same thing, too, at least on the majority of my albums. Like, 
the last song is the ballad, you know what I'm saying? And try to like a worship song. I usually would put like a worship song or something on the album. And you kind of had that, like this heart cry to God type deal, you know, you know what I'm saying? Going home or whatever. And then uh, the the other one right before the end as well. Both of them, I think. Yeah. Unfailing faith. Yeah. 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 It was a good one. One of my, one of my, one of my close friends are like, man, you know, you, uh, this isn't a Christian album (laughs) because it, it, and I say that because, you know, a lot of people, when they think of Christian, they think of Catholic or they think of this religious church type deal where it's like, oh, you know, thou art child. But it's like, yo, this, this is like you said, man, it's a war cry, you know, and it's time's almost up, man, you know, and look, at the end of the day, I ain't trying to change what's happening because it's got to happen. You know, it's written. You know, and I got close friends that don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Bible. I'm like, yo, you know what it's over? I think it's like uh, there's 1,800 prophecies in the Bible and like 1,500 have been fulfilled. And you don't believe that? Like it's, not, it's proven they've been fulfilled and you still don't believe the Bible. But some people always have their rebuttal. They always have, well, prove it. Show me, you know, show me this in the physical, you know, uh, material form, you know, but... As so, you believe as well, not everything's material. Yeah. You know? Oh, for sure, man. The scripture says that things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Um, but with that being said, man, do you think that, you know, it's kind of like, is it counterproductive because you, you're kind of like prolonging the inevitable? Or can it be like, look, like when you get to the other side and you stand in eternity before God said, look, I did my part. I tried to stand up against this machine, whether I was successful, whether I... I made people consciously aware or just told them to seek you, whatever it was like, you know what I'm saying? That you, you live to try to do your part to stand up against this great beast that's rising up. Look, listen, fam, like I came from a fucked up, you know, really, really, really fucked up situation, really fucked up childhood, all that. And I'm not here to talk about that, but I saw a picture the other day and it said, God pulled you out the pit so that you can go back and pull others out once you got out. And that's what I think the music platform is my biggest way to do it. Now, look, and I say in the songs here and there, like if my people are struggling, I try to help them out on a, on a you know, tangible level. But this is spiritual and it's more important. You know, like if I need to pay somebody's light bill, that's cool. That's heartfelt. But imagine helping save someone's soul. And I don't take no credit for, I can't save a soul. I can only show them, yo, there is someone who could save your soul, you know? So, and I got a long way to go still, you know, I'm still, I still got my flaws. I'm still, you know, a, a, a sinner and I'm, I still fall short, you know, majorly every day. But if I could inspire somebody or help somebody out of that pit, then there, I don't think there's no greater calling than to do something like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I'm with you. I think, um, <clears throat> you know, what I'm doing with this podcast and with my music is, is, is very similar, you know, whether it's like addressing, like, just because you're a Christian, right? Just because you love the Lord doesn't mean you don't, you're not into some other things, whether you you care about what we're becoming and you can see us moving further away from the earth and from spirituality and to these, you know what I'm saying? We're literally merging AI and becoming cyborgs and we don't even know it. Like our brain, without even putting anything in us, like they're changing the way that our brain works and we receive pleasure. I mean, with the smartphones, you know what I'm saying? It's like, there's so many Harvard studies and stuff and people, they un- scientists understand like, like you know what i'm saying the neuro pathways within the brain and how we receive dopamine and like these uh it's like a little reward system in the body and when we um you know get likes on facebook or get views or whatever it's rewiring our brain so that like it's making us happy and if we log in and nobody's seeing our stuff and nobody's clicking like then we're like man maybe i'm doing something wrong or something's not working for us as you know, artists and entrepreneurs and we got a product and we're trying to, you know, we got to see what's working and what isn't like, it's kind of part of the business, but if it's getting to us and I have to admit that it definitely messes with me a little bit. Right. 
you put out a post and nobody sees it. Now you're fighting the algorithms. Now the the algorithms kicking in, and now you said even you just dropping a few f bombs. This podcast is going to be demonetized. So I'm like. Hold on, let's don't curse. You know what I'm saying? So there's like the different ways. I'm good because YouTube is just doing so much crazy stuff with my channel anyway. So I ain't even worried about YouTube. This is, you know what I'm saying, with the audio in is, is, is really where it's at. But even dealing with YouTube and the algorithms, you can't even search my name anymore. Like there was a time where like my SEO and Google learned who I was. If you type in truths with an S, truth, and you put an S on it, I came up just because how much I was Googled, how much I was searched and people would click me with typing in truths, not, you know what I'm saying? So Google kind of learns that within just a couple weeks, a couple months, they like removed my name from the search. So now when you type in truths with an S, there is not even a truth seeker up there. Like it, like with the predictive text. Um, so I'll, I'll do a music video and spend money and stuff and do this production and put out a, a video and, and YouTube won't even let nobody see it. I don't know if that's because if that's like there was just when that happened, they were saying that they were targeting some of these truth or channels or conspiracy theory channels, which I try not to even deal with conspiracy theories. You know, really, like I'm trying to deal with spirituality and stuff, but you're going to get some of that in our stuff. Right. But uh, we're fighting against that, the algorithms and, you know what I'm saying, trying to get our message out there. And then I got 14,000 likes on Facebook, but they'll let seven people see my post. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is like, what do we do, fam? Like, really, you know? I have the same issue. I mean, I, I don't have that many likes, but I have thousands of, I, I haven't been on Facebook, actually. I have an artist page, you know. Uh, I deleted Facebook in 2015 because I noticed what you were saying about, um, you know, like the dopamine and shit, right? And yeah. Like, oh, only only thirteen people like this, and you know, it's a, you know whatever it what. And then I check myself going on there, and like, I'm a I'm a I'm a father, you know, I got a kid to raise, I got shit I got to do, and I'm sitting here worrying about people. So I just deleted it. <laughs> but I had had so many um, followers or likes or whatever it is on the artist page that my graphics designer actually um he runs my facebook page now and every once in a blue moon i'll be like yo man put a put a post out there for me when you get a chance and you know like seven people will see it but i got like seven thousand yeah on it, you know and it's yeah man it's it's crazy um it's part of actually, the it's i was thinking when you were saying that like uh what what is that um is it possible that all these people being censored. I know I heard of a lot of YouTube channels getting shut down. I follow yeah. people on Instagram who are, you know, uh, patriotic, uh, you know, awakening type, inspiring people when they get shut down at like, you know, 70,000 followers or something like that. And it just keeps on happening and keeps on happening. So then the question arises, what's really going on? Are you, and it goes back to the music again. Like, is it, are they, um, reinforcing the message that I've, I've been saying all along, if we unite, they're screwed. You know, if we come together, cause you got these people with a platform like yourself that got thousands of people coming together under one roof, one message, one, you know, calling or whatnot. And, and, and then they shut people down. And I apologize for swearing no, you're good. You know what? And even that word's not even the curse word, really. The curse word really was the the, the T word that we used. Oh my goodness! You know what that, I'm saying? See, and that's a whole that, man. and that's you know what's interesting about that is that my guy's in North Carolina, and he's like, you know, um, the the governor or what whoever he was of North Carolina was saying they're not going to make. He's like, there's a bathroom for the men and there's a bathroom for the women, you know, and that's how it's going to be. We don't want no men walking in the women's bathroom when someone's in there with her daughter. Right. And so PayPal apparently was housed in North Carolina. And they said, now he told me this whole story. He's like, PayPal told him we up out of here, you know, because and then there was some stadium. I, I don't yeah. know which sport it was, yeah. if it was football, but they were like, uh, 
you know, we're going to lose uh, sales on our tickets because our fans aren't going to come to the show if the men can't use the women's restrooms. Well, here's my thing. So PayPal left. Well, the mayor got replaced or the governor, whoever he was, he got replaced. He said, hey, we got bathrooms for everybody. Bring your little girl to piss with the old man, you know, and and then people rejoice. But the thing is that I brought up and that I wonder is what percentage of North Carolina is the transgender man. or supports that? Because I would venture to bet money that it's less than 2% of the state. So as an, as our country's like based upon if it's, you know, if the people demand for something, um, we're supposed to run the government, right? And the government reinforces the will of the yeah. people. But, it, but on a mass level, it's not the will of the people. Actually, it's a man, media manipulation to make us think that it's a large number and a will of the people when, in fact, it's it's a single-digit percentage of the population. There, it may even be smaller than 2%, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it may I, be a I, fraction I, of a percent, like a very small. But we always hear that, you know, the squeaky wheel is the one that gets the oil. They're just louder than the rest, you know? But is it them that's louder or is it the media that's pushing some agenda from, from somewhere else? You know, maybe it's the hidden hand or whatever. This is all biblical to me. You know, yeah. there was a, I have, I've, I've had a thought for time and I'd like to share this. Um, I don't remember if it was the angel of the Lord, but they, or if it was God himself, but they gave Daniel a little black book or, or it was, uh, it was either Daniel or John. It was either in revelation or in the book of Daniel. They gave him a little black book. And he said, uh, in, in that book, there are things you are never to speak of. They're abominations. And, and he said he swallowed the little black That's going to be Jeremiah, I believe. Is it Jeremiah? Yeah. Okay. So I thought myself, maybe he knew that the transgender thing was coming and it was in that little black book. You know, that might be, because that was, that was some, just a thought. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, just something that's kind of been on my heart. Because God knew. You know, and it wasn't no thing. It wasn't, that was not a thing back then. Yeah, you it's know? like, yeah. well, you find out like when you know it's an agenda, something's going on is when you have like real transgender people who can see what's going on. Like people who are really like older, right? They're not kids being given hormones at like three years old and all this kind of craziness is demonic, bro. Straight up. Um sure. Uh, but when you have people who are gay, who are like, hold on, like something's going on. Now it's a trend to be gay. And I love I love gay people. Like if you if you naturally d desire the same sex, that's between you and God. I, I, don't, I ain't really got nothing to say about that. I've never I've never looked at another man with lust and burned in my heart and wanted to be with them. That's something that's between them and God and whatever. They got to deal with that, whatever it is. Um, But when it's being promoted, like you're saying to the kids and, and there's gay people who see this, like this is something near and dear to their heart that they fought for, that they believe in. Now it's like you get mad at your parents and you become gay or you get mad at your parents and you abandon your gender or you get mad at God and you abandon your gender. Now what's an option? Like this is, it's getting really fishy. It's getting squirrely. Something's going on. I, I'm like, I ain't got nothing against gay people. I love gay people. Right. Again, but it's there is something going on. There's an there's an agenda. We've heard different types of theories, but any we can't even talk about it because when we talk about it, they're either going to demonetize the video, remove the video. They'll start screaming to even have the conversation, right? Just to have the conversation, and it's like, hold on, you can't even talk about this. Like that's when you know something's going on, right? I remember I, I took a, I went to college, you know, and uh, my my English two class was based the whole class, which I had never even heard of this book at the time, was based on the George Orwell's nineteen eighty four book. You familiar with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole semester, the whole course was based around the book, and you had things like, um, oh, what do they call that? Um, Basically, words were changed. You couldn't speak about certain things. You know, the lie in the media changed every month. It changed over to a new thing. And uh, like you said, man, like we went from being, uh, you know, supposedly the land of the free and having freedom of speech, freedom of religion to now everything's censored, you know? And it's like, you, 
like you said, even if we ain't bashing it, but we're talking about it and we're saying, hey, you know, that we don't have nothing against gay people because I don't need it, you know, but what I do have against is influencing children to, especially at a young age, confuse them. Now, I speak as a father and I know you're a father too, you know, and I don't want any sexual activity around my kid until he's a certain age, yeah. uh, especially something that's unnatural to him and his, you know, like. Well, I know you've seen, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, Devin the Amazing, right? The little boy they got twerking in the clubs and stuff. And I didn't know that was his name, but yeah, I saw. And then they do yeah. the parades and they got their, their, you know, their penis out in front of these little kids, bro. And like, that's the type of shit, man. You know, if I'm around that, then unfortunately, you know, things are going to take a turn south because I, I have, a, a, you know, a big heart for the kiddos, man. And you don't do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, there's no, that's called, um, you know, that's, that's perverted and, and it's uh, pedophiles, you know? Yeah. I'm reading the comments here. It's just seeing where everybody's at in the conversation. It's hard. What are they talking it's hard, about? It's hard not to. Well, somebody said, and this is what getting made fun of. They said they distrust the gangster slang. And then shout out to Chris Garner. He's like, you do know that they're b both rappers, right? <laughs> For sure, man. Um, yeah, but dude, I mean, it's 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 so much, and like that's just one iota. That's just one one piece of it. Um, so with the whole the whole theme of what we've become, uh, even. You know what I'm saying? The title track on the album, what we've become the song. You had a bunch of kids singing. Who were those kids? Was that something stock or did you set that up? How, how, who were those kids singing on that track? That was that was tough to get that. Uh, so it's actually my son, uh, a good friend of mine who actually put me on to your music, his daughter. And a children's choir from Spain of 33 kids. So did you guys so, record record it first and have the kids record it and then send it to them to to kind of do the background and like add a, a choir with it? Yeah, you know, it was tough because the quality that I got from the choir in Spain wasn't what I was hoping for. Um, but I did have many different kids come here and, and I had many different takes. Uh, ultimately, I had my, my homeboy do a basically a reference of what it should sound like. Yeah. You know, I had my son, my son is so funny, you know, but uh, the girl did really good. My, her name's Naya Bouvier. She did really good. And um, she's kind of got like the lead vocal there. And then my son's really distant in the background. And then the kids are kind of the reinforcement, the choir. Um, so yeah, we sent it to them and they, they, they recorded it all at once in a big classroom. So yeah. you kind of hear that reverb there, but there's a big open room. Um, I wanted, it was about 90% of what I wanted. It, it, I didn't really hit the mark 100%, but it was close enough. And the reason for the children is because sometimes, you know, when a kid, you know, brings it to the attention, it's like, okay, if the kids are talking about it, you know, and I explained to the kids, you know, like to everyone that came here, you know, this is what I'm trying to say you know, and to their parents as well, you know, uh, it, Spain was a little different, but cause there were other kids who came and got on the track as well that I didn't use their vocals. Yeah. You know, they didn't, they didn't really, um, hit what I was looking for, but yeah, man, it was, it was, it was really an honor to have those kids on the choir, on the chorus. Yeah. That was, that was a nice touch. It came out great though. It did come out good. Um, and I think when when you told me about the album, one of the songs you told me about, maybe you, you already knew that it would probably probably be my favorite, but it's uh, Ethereal Entities, which is probably my favorite track on the album. Yeah, you know what's funny about that? That's the first. So the whole album was produced by one producer. Got my kudos favorite. as well. Kudos on the on the production, which was amazing. Yeah, very close friend actually. Uh, my big brother, his name's DX, and um. That was the first beat he sent me before we talked about an album, you know, before we talked, he sent me that beat and uh, I was, I was, I fell in love with it. You know, I was like, man, this is my speed. It's right up my alley. Um, and originally 
that track was going to be called Is God Real? And it was going to be, and you can't really catch that in the first verse, but in the second verse, if you listen, you'll hear me kind of making claims as like proof of an, of an existence of a creator, uh, like the complexities of geometrical patterns and atoms and stuff like that. And uh, I just felt like I couldn't really call it Is God Real? And I, and I struggled for a long time. I didn't think of the title until after it was already mastered. It came to me. I was like, damn, ethereal entities, that's perfect because I'm talking about seraphim and, you know, demons and cherubim and, you know, uh, it came together well. You know, it wasn't what I originally planned for the song, but it all came together. Yeah. Um, talking about seraphims and angels and, and entities, that's that's right up my uh, uh, alley. So yeah. uh, if if there was a track I could have been on, it would have been that one. You should have sent me that one. <laughs> all right, all right. I like and it. That's why, and that's why I said, you know, I've told you before, like there's some of sometimes I've sent you a few tracks and sometimes it's like me just kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do with this. And you're a dope artist. So I'm like, maybe he'll spice it up a little. But what I really want to do on a track with you is something like that. You yeah, know, that's my, you know, my vibe for real. Yeah, for sure. Because the majority of the album has like this apocalyptic feel like these horns and these heavy drums and dun 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 you know what i'm saying that kind of feel but this is that that more laid back where i can kind of get in and maneuver my voice and da, 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 you know what i'm saying that's what i do so but kudos on the track i really love that track um i want to talk about the beginning of the album which is we, we i know i'm assuming or a couple, several months back beginning of the year but you did a song called bricks right and it's this trappy uh, like braggadocious, I got money, chopping drugs or whatever. And I, I think there was still a message in it in somewhere, but it was very different than what we've expected from you and what we've heard from you. And anytime you change, anytime you change it up, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have a problem. It does. I don't care. Like, you know, this, this channel I'm doing, you know, truth and spirituality, conspiracies and uh, all this kind of stuff. And then I started gaming on the channel. Dude, I lost so many subscribers. Like, oh, I didn't sign on to get any alerts for your gaming videos, you know? So I was like, okay. Like, once somebody's used to something, that's all they want. And if you change it up, they're jumping ship. And so this song that you put out, you got a couple reactions from, and I know I was messing with you, and I was like, nope, this ain't you. I hate it or something. You know what I'm saying? Just messing with you on there. But talk a little bit about that song, Bricks. And on here, it says you featured Rick Ross and Gucci Mane on the track as well. So talk about Bricks and then the beginning of the new album. So <laughs> I think it was you, and you're like, this sounds like it was 10 years old, which is funny because... I held that track to my chest. One of the producers I've worked with in my previous albums works close with industry A&Rs and he always reaches out like, yo, I can get you a verse with this guy or I can get you licenses with these cats. You know, I mean, rappers I like, rappers that are famous, whatever. So I took that track, you know, I, I got that track, uh, Rick Ross and Gucci, man. And you know, my original plan. So those um, are like real verses from them. Those are like oh, yeah. exclusive yes. verses. They're not like mixtape. You know how the mixtapes, we used to just like take one verse off and say, hey, I featured Juvenile and so-and-so. This is like legit exclusive tracks. Yeah, so I'll put myself out there and say I wouldn't call it exclusive because I'm not the only person that has rights to that verse, but they don't. It was, it was, kind of, this was like a negotiated contract with the A. You have rights. You have, you have rights. It's not exclusive. Those, but you... those verses and the hook that Rick Ross did and the verse that Gucci Man did are not on any of their material. From they're not, they were not previously released and remixed or nothing like that. Um, but the ability existed for someone else to purchase them in addition to me. See what I'm yeah. saying? Um, but I got them for a very low price. I mean, I had to grab it. And back, I bought those joints in 2014. So to kind of make <laughs> a long story short, um, I bought them and I don't like those guys. You know what I'm saying? And nothing against them in particular. I'm not going to sit here and oh. down talk no man. You know, <laughs> they make their money. They do their thing. I don't support the message they, they, they give. Um, but I wanted to look, man, there's things that I have done in my life that, you know, I can't even talk about, you know, and there's things that I've had to do. And, and um, I'm sick of all these fake ass rappers talking about shit that they don't do. Um, you know, it's like, 
you're here with a podcast doing your thing and you got these fake ass, say you got some clown ass dude talking about his podcast all the time. He ain't even got one. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> what the fuck is the matter with you? You know? So I, I'm versatile, man. I like to show people I could do, I could do anything with rap. Now there's things that I won't do. So I held that track to the chest, bro, for, for years. And originally my verse started off and since we were cursed, my verse started off with, Fuck Rick Ross, motherfuck Gucci too, and you know that. So I, I was gonna make it this first on the own the own song, you know, and release it. But I was like, ah, that's gonna just make me look like a hater, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to be, I don't want to be hating on these dudes. So let me just show the audience that I can stand next to some of the most famous artists in the world, you know. So, anyways, did the track. Uh, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't like it um and then you know moving i got some feedback from it you know some people loved it some people hated it they're like like you said you know it's not you um and now the intro to the album wasn't necessarily just exclusive to a, a response to that song but it, it's along the lines of that that type of music what everyone's doing you know you got all these guys rapping out here about how they just bought a new car or how they just fucking you know, sold a brick or just fuck the bitch, you know, like that's all they say over and over, you know, part of my language, but you know, so the album comes on the beats, you know, little, little dark, little heavy. And uh, my guy's like, I just got me a Bugatti. <laughs> I'm like, yo, we're going to throw that on there. We're going to start that. Ain't nobody heard an album from me since 2014. It's 2019, five years, right? I ain't dropped the album and all hip hop's been changing. So why not come out? and throw the listener off, right? Like I told you, to evoke emotion, like instantly they're gonna hear that and be like, damn, truth fucking changed, you know? But give me 30 seconds, you know, because you're gonna see that, now give me give me two minutes and 30 seconds and watch me destroy this fucking crazy ass beat, you know? So I feel like I, uh, I, I tried to draw in not only not only did I try to throw off my fans who I knew like who I know like the stuff I do, but I try yeah. to draw in a new crowd because sometimes you know you got to. I try to draw them in, but real quick let them know I'm not doing that. You know I'm not doing a new boo guy. You know, uh, let me spit some real rap for you. So that's kind of the yeah situation yeah, and you mind. did, and you you there was some uh, some uh, schemes on there, some rhyming schemes that were really fast and really really dope and intricate so shout out to you on that but yeah that's cool because like i used to mess with people too like i would go do shows and there were people there who didn't know who i was and i would just grab the mic and just start rapping like little corny stuff hey what's up i love jesus christ you know what i'm saying they were like who is this white corny rapper and then the, my song would kick in and then I, we'd hit them with something chopping fast you know and just kind of throw them off a little bit just for oh, fun you know what i'm saying bro, um, i like but hey, I want to I want to uh, just give a shout out to uh, you know how Joe Rogan on his podcast he has Jamie, and so they kind of fact check and look up stuff. Hey, hey Jamie, pull this up. So we have the audience here, we have the chat, and uh, shout out to let me see who this was, uh, Mary, who uh, fact checked for us on the, on that uh, e eating of the the black book, the little book. It was Revelation ten ten, and it was John who ate that book, and then on the Old Testament one, it was mentioned of in Ezekiel. 3, 3, where he ate the scroll there was a scroll and god said take it and eat it so obviously um there was something symbolic about it and uh eating the word and consuming it and taking it in and using it as you know what i'm saying new the, the word as nutrients for the body and things like that so there's a lot of spiritual implications so yeah shout out to uh the fact checking uh community out there because i mean people people dig it man because somebody's never heard of that and they want to want to look it up so i figured it's worth it just to go ahead and let people know where to go to check that out um so um i guess like i don't want to like I f even like just talking about this we get so much so much flag but just with the conspiracies thing there was this thing and we, we had a mutual friend who i'm not going to say his name I, uh, but uh he was sharing a bunch of memes and shout out to him because he did remove these memes um, I went and checked before the podcast and those memes weren't there. But there were these memes about the transgenders in Hollywood. And they were showing like most of like the A-list female celebrities. I mean, we've heard this with there's a bunch of conspiracies saying that Michelle Obama is really a man named Michael Obama. Um, but then there's like Taylor Swift. 
I mean, Angelina Jolie, all of the A-list celebrities, they're saying that these are boys. These are men. And they have photos of them turned to the side and it looks like they have an Adam's apple. And the conspiracy people, like, we just love everything. So they're just, like, resharing it, retweeting it, posting it, adding their comments. And they're making all these claims about all of these people um, in Hollywood who they say are transgender. And they're really men. Um and I, 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 I say I checked them. I tried to let them know, hey, that's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that. Unless you're 100. And I'm not going to say on here what I <laughs> told you. Unless you've seen unless you've seen their parts. Don't Unless you're 100% sure. Don't make claims about people that you're not sure about. Don't accuse anybody of anything. That's the problem with the conspiracy theory thing. Is like because these people are sure. I mean, it's a problem with the flat earth. It's a pro problem with anyone with their absolute because they're absolutely sure that Angelina Jolie is a man, that Michelle Obama is a man and, and Barack is gay. Like all of these crazy claims because they watched a video that was put really good and there was some good music behind it while wow, they're drawing you in and there's a synth and it's like, wow, this is really convincing and it moves you and you're like, wow, this is good evidence and we'll believe anything, right? Just if it's produced and packaged right. You know, that's part of propaganda. And so people with conspiracy theories and memes, we have a generation who's like they get their theology and their belief system off of memes. And I don't think that that's right. And um, so I told the dude, he, I think he ended up taking it down. He's a mutual friend of ours and fan. He's a good brother. Um, but to, we have to be careful. Um, one of the biggest conspiracy dudes out there on YouTube, um, ODD, ODD TV, I had him on. And I told him the same thing. Like, you better be, sh you need to be sure that this stuff is happening. Like, Alex Jones making all these claims, they come back to bite him on the on the butt. Like, he lost everything for, like, making these claims and, and getting, like, because people, f like, acted upon it. Like, they were, like, gang stalking and calling, like, you know, this got really weird, man. Because these people out here will follow anything, man. So, be careful, following conspiracies or watching a video and then running with it, especially when it's degrading and calling people out. If you're not a hundred percent sure, I think the problem there is those people think they're a hundred percent sure after seeing those memes and seeing a bulge, they're sure. Right. And so they're calling people out. And the reason I say that is because you have to suffer the karma behind that. If you throw that out there in the universe and you're lying and you're mocking and you're smearing and you're wrong, it's coming back to you. You got to pay for those words. You're going to give an account for every idle word that you say towards somebody, calling them out of their gender and swearing up and down and telling other people. We got to be careful. That's why we get caught up on these conspiracies, man. When, again, with what you're talking about, it's like, look, let's make the main thing the main thing. Because with all of these stuff, there's rabbit holes. We can go down any of them. We can go down the transgender. We can go down, you know, there's just so many. Flat Earth, 9-11. And, and we do. But there's a deeper message, man, and a deeper call that we've been given, which is to reconcile people back to the father through Christ. And we find that these conspiracies or these little truths, he might, uh, Michelle Obama might be a man. I don't know. That's the fact. Like, I don't know. But um, we've been given a greater responsibility. And we you see these people who maybe even start out in the truth. And I've been guilty of it. Maybe you have, too. But that becomes their message. The message isn't Christ crucified. The message isn't a sin spiritually better yourself. The message becomes, you know, transgender. The message becomes flat earth. And you know what I'm saying? It's just like this psyop that just kind of gets thrown in like a wrench in the machine and gets a person off their course because they were speaking the truth and teaching the truth and sharing the truth, the truth. Now they're just giving, you know, getting caught up on these little truths, plural. What would you say about that, man, without, you know, do you think it's a big deal? Do you think, you know, there's repercussion, you know what I'm saying? I mean, because what if what if we were the butt of those jokes? And I have been, right? I mean, that's probably how I learned not to do it because I've been the butt of those jokes, you know? I think, um, like you said, they might start off with their message, you know, being, you know, being pure and then they get caught up in this rabbit hole and then, Next thing you know, they're not focused on the main thing no more. They're focused on the flat earth or the transgender or whatever it is. Um, but that's, you know, when, as you were saying it, I'm like, you know, the enemy's at work. 
You know, if he can slide in at any point, he's going to slide in real slick, you know, and next thing you know, your eyes off the prize and it's on something else. I mean, like you said, yes, I've been guilty. You know, I am guilty of it. Um, but at the end of the day, when I look deep inside myself and when I really think about what is my true goal here, you know, um, it's like that song, bro. I said, one day, one day we gonna, one day we all gonna go home. This earth isn't, I never felt at home here. You know, I never really, uh, I bounce around a lot, you know, and, and life is really good right now, but I still don't feel at home. Um, I'm not from here, bro. And I know people <laughs> like, people laugh when I say that, you know, and it's, but, yeah, I've witnessed in guided meditations um, and breath empowerments, you know, like traveling, you know, and, and I would wake up crying and I'd be, because I, it was like confirmation of the other, like, damn, I was, I was home for a second, you know, like, and it wasn't necessarily a place. It was like, there was no, I'd just be, you know, and uh, I guess I'm kind of getting off track, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, this shit is temporary here. And if we're so focused on what's here, um, for what? We're, it's a blip, you know? They say the universe has existed for hundreds of billions of years and we're alive for a hundred years at most. And probably not even that. <laughs> and then, you know, a hundred years passes and the whole thing changes. And next thing you know, they're flying to the moon or ooh, whatever they're doing. Or maybe they didn't fly to the moon, I don't know. but. Um, things change, man. People forget about you, you know, generations pass and you're nothing. But the Bible teaches us that we are something, you know, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made and, you know, that God knows every hair on our head and he loves us. And, you know, uh, Satan fell from heaven because God loves us, you know, like, so, and, and he hates that because we're greater than the angels, you know? So, I mean, th there's really nothing more powerful than that, man. That's an amazing thing. You know, that's why, um, I wear this bracelet I wanted to show you earlier. I don't know if you could see, but it says famous enough. And my guy actually put me onto this company and I bought a couple of things from him because what you were saying earlier about like the social media, the likes, you know, people hearing my music, like I'm not a cocky dude. You know, I try to be, you know, in gratitude and humble as much as I can. And, uh, but at the same time, I know that I'm a talented artist, bro, you know, and I don't get the, the, um, response that I think that my music deserves, you know, but and not only that, but I'm, on a more personal level, I'm a, I'm a single full-time dad, you know, I have sole custody of my child, you know, I don't have a woman in my life and, and um, it gets hard, you know, like maintaining a household and a child and all these things. And I'm like, man, you know, I see all these beautiful women and they with these, uh, you know, no one notices me, no one notices what I do, whether it's the music or it's the personal life, but God knows, God knows what I'm doing, you know? So at the end of the day, God sees it, you know? And, yeah. and, and, and if he sees it, then what else, if God's for us, then who's against us, you know, like what else really matters? If the most powerful thing in all of existence in, in, in eternity loves me, I mean, <laughs> how much more flattered could I be? Why, why me? You know, I don't deserve that love. So it's like, man, I must be, I must be special. You, you must be special. Everyone listening and watching must be special because God loves you the same as he loves me, you know? And uh, that's a high honor, man. For people, um, I love to play the devil's advocate. It makes for a great conversation. Um, but um, for people who, you know, they hear you just like, yeah, you, you're deep on that truth, but I don't, you be mentioning Jesus too much and you just be preaching too much. I like your other stuff, but not the Jesus stuff. Like we got, you know, I, we did an event the other day. It's called the Christ Consciousness event, by the way. And the moment we mentioned Jesus from the platform, this guy got up and walked out. You know what I'm saying? And there's people who they, even on these shows, hey, we mentioned Jesus, they're out the door. I mean, but that's with anything. We mentioned, mentioned transgender, they're out the door. And there's people who would, you know, hear your stuff and they say, you know what, this, this, you got me until, up until the Jesus thing. What has it done for you, though? Like, let's just say, and, and here's the devil's advocate. Let's just say, because we don't know. We have, that's where faith comes in, right? Um, we don't know. 
much. We just, we've heard the story, we responded, and we've seen what it's done for our lives, this relationship of something that responds to the name of Jesus or Yeshua, you know what I'm saying? What has it done for you? Like, has it made you a better person? What, what, where's the power at in it, in it for you? Like from where you were to believing in this and being empowered, because you're not the person you used to be. You're not where you were. Well, first of all, I just want to say all these people that they want to get offended and walk out for this, they too thin skin, man. Like grow up. You know what I'm saying? People have disagreements. People have opinions and beliefs. This is the United States, man. We like this free speech. I mean, if I don't like something someone's saying, I guess I have the right to leave, but you know, if, 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 if you like some of it and not others, you know, you know, eat the meat, spit out the bones and maybe go home and pray about it later, you know, to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. No, I mean, the Bible, some, I read some real stuff, man, like uh, in the Bible, like two things I want to mention. Number one, uh, a situation that happened in my early adulthood with a person I considered to be a brother, you know, and it was like some unforgiving shit, you know what I'm saying? And I was, you know, gravitating towards God and, and the Bible and learning about this stuff. And uh, I came across a verse and it said uh, something about, uh, and you can get your fact checker again, said something about, uh, you know, he who doesn't forgive, you know, my father will also not forgive. Yeah. You know, now, now, so that's one of the things. So I was, so I called that dude up and I said, yo, man, I just want to let you know, I forgive you. It don't mean I'm going to hang with, with him. It don't mean I'm going to be around him, but I'm not, I don't care. Like I don't hold grudges against no one. I, you know, I've gotten done dirty and uh, I think it's important to forgive people, man. And I think it liberates you, you yeah. know, because, and then the second thing I want to say um, that I also saw in there, that was some real shit because, you know, like for a long time, you know, long time, just only the past couple of years have I been so, you know, uh, freely expressive of the name of Jesus. Um, but you know, Jesus said, you know, uh, you deny me, you know, when my father asked, when my father in heaven asked, I'm going to deny you, Yeah. you know, and there's a verse for that. If the fact checkers want to check that. So I'm like, yo, I ain't trying to hold that burden. For I'm going to sure, go ahead man. and free me. <laughs> so not only for myself, yeah. not only is it a benefit for me, but it's a benefit for them as well. So why curse myself and uh, block someone from you know maybe being introduced to 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 also it says this he who does not have the son does not have the father jesus himself said no man comes to the father lest it be through me so i was talking with this chick who had this jewish belief for a long time and she's like you know she didn't believe in, in jesus and all this stuff and i'm like that's cool you know did you did you read the scripture for your children, because, you know, I love her children and I, I love kids, bro, you know, and like, I would hate to see somebody, you know, I can't control what anybody does with their kids and I don't want to, but if I could shed some light on something that maybe they're unaware of, you know, he who does not have the son does not have the father. So it's important, you know, for, you know, people think that, oh, you know, I believe in the one true God, you know, well, the Old Testament says in Isaiah, unto you a child shall be born. And the government will rest on his shoulders, which I had revelation the, yesterday or the day before about, about that, that being Trump. Huh? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, about it being Jesus, about yeah. how the government rests on his shoulders and how the laws have been uh, submitted to grace, you know, but uh, that's another conversation. But it says his name shall be called God Almighty, the everlasting father. So it literally says a child shall be born and his name will be called God. His name will be called the everlasting father, you know? So when they stick to that and they're like, no, well, you know, God couldn't do that with Jesus and all that. I mean, it says it in the books, they believe too, but they omit those scriptures. I know that's Jewish. funny, right? Yeah, that's it's funny. wild, so that's whether, important, you know? Whether it's prophecy or whether it's just something else fishy, like um, I had a guy on the other day and we were talking about, um, Mary Magdalene and um, and uh, the Gnostic Gospels and stuff like that. And I, f I have a certain belief, and, but I'm open to discuss it, right? But I wanted to make sure that I uh, didn't deny Christ, you know what I'm saying? And the power, uh, you know, of the cross and the power of his resurrection, right? Which is why I'm here today. And I, and I didn't want to, like, deny that, but I didn't want to have to, like, 
I wanted to be open to have the conversation with the guy, not a debate with him. I'm not here to debate with anybody, but just, you know, we talking and then he started uh, like he he started talking about Christ and he was saying that how Christians pretty much were stupid for believing that a man disappeared. And if you claim that today, you'll be in a put in a crazy house and all this kind of stuff. I was like, hold on. Like, but the guy was Jewish. Right. I was like, hold on. We. You got people disappearing all throughout the script. What about the Old Testament? If you were Jewish and you claiming you're Jewish, you know, and you claim that a guy was taken up in a whirlwind and there's angels I, appearing and people disappearing and stuff like that. So you could believe that. But the New Testament, you can't believe. And and then the guy also, you know, said he had a book that was channeled to him from Jesus from the other side. Jesus and Mary told him to write a book and said, you know, all these crazy things, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like. People believe what they want to believe, you know, and so I, I do feel like as well, like people, you know, talking about you got to have something other than that, something other than Jesus. My dad was a preacher, you know, he dis I came out as gay and he uh, disowned me. Well, I have to I have to have something other than his faith. I'm abandoning the faith of my fathers. So they'll come up with anything. Right. They'll come up with or, or like. You know, if we're looking at atheists or we're looking at, uh, you know, people who don't believe in creation, they come up with the Big Bang or we came from fish or whatever the case. You got to have something other than an intelligent design. You know what I'm saying? And they'll come up with all kind of stuff because there's this rebellion in them, a part of the, our nature that that despises that which is good. It's in all of us. Right. We all have that animalistic nature, that flesh. And we got to feed the spirit and make sure that we're not walking in the flesh and do these spiritual things. But these people are making these like, you know, they're coming up with new ways to uh, <laughs> denounce God and, and merging men with machines. It's like, hey, we've become God. They're playing God. Right. With all of this stuff. And it's a slap in the face of the creator, man. They have an art against God, bro. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking about what you had said about, you know, people who are cool with a lot of the stuff you do. You mentioned Jesus and they kind of turn away. There's cats right now that are going to watch this podcast. I'm going to be like, man, you had me until y'all started getting religious. Well, we've already know? we've already lost a lot of people <laughs> watching live. I'll tell you that there was a lot more people watching <laughs> just a few minutes ago. <laughs> hey, it's, like they say, it's like they say, though, man, you walk in a bar and mention the name of Jesus and they'll kick you out. I mean. Yeah. Think about it. Well, I think about, think about what dictates the life of the people who are have to leave because it says, you know, you will cast out devils and and and, and hey man, I'm not gonna sit here and say if it's a devil in somebody, but there's a reason why you can't be in a conversation when the name of Jesus is brought up. Yeah, you're not allowed to. You actually have to leave <laughs> until you. Surrender. I mean, look. You know, it's like I always used to use this analogy. If the room is completely dark, right, and you flip on the light switch, the darkness doesn't go like in the right corner. It, it, it is completely eliminated by the law. It just there is no way the darkness can exist amongst the light. You know, it, it, there's no coinciding. It's just what it is. The light eliminates the darkness. So when you start bringing up the name of Jesus, people got to go, you know? Yeah. I was um I found an interview that I did back in 2012 and it was one of my first ones where I got to kind of speak openly about the spirit realm and you know what I'm saying just my beliefs and stuff and how they've evolved we, we might have even talked about aliens and stuff like that you know but it was about it was a pretty big interview there was a lot of people listening and towards the end of the interview he's like okay this is the last question I always end on this and I actually just uploaded this clip yesterday he said I always end on this he's like a lot of times people censor themselves. They want to say things, but they can't because they're afraid of ridicule or whatever, or they're holding back. He said, what's the most uh, controversial thing that you can share with me at the end of this podcast? What is the most thing, the most controversial thing? And I, I told him, I said, look, God loves you. And he sent this <laughs> to die in your place, man, to die for your sins. He's not mad at you. And he desires a relationship. He said, he got, he kind of gasped for a second. He probably thought it was going to my aliens and in, people are, there's implants inside of people. I don't know what he thought I was going to say. Anything but that. And he kind of, he kind of like, 
Uh, yeah, that is the most controversial <laughs> thing. He agreed with me, and he said when he got into radio, they told him not to speak on Christ. Don't preach from the Bible and don't speak on the Christian, uh, you know, scenario or the Christian, um, what is it called? Uh, you know, the, don't talk about Christ, God, and the Bible because people are going to tune out, you know, if you speak on it too much. And, uh, yeah, that was back in 2012. And so, yeah, that's the most controversial thing I can say. We could talk about all this other crazy conspiracy stuff which is real, you know, or or could be real, you know, and it's truths, plural, but there's a truth at the end of the day. There's, and there's a longing within all of us to, uh, to uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, know where we came from and get back to that and or run from that, right? There's this, the pursuit in, in, in that's within man and want to know where we go when we die. And so we have to make up these theories and, exp you know, try to have these alternatives other than, you know, what's been told to us. But I think we're we're kind of in a weird spot too because like, you know, at least I am because I feel like that Christ has been misrepresented by the majority of Christendom. Um, with, like he's just, just condemning and you're going to hell. And there's like, there's people who would tell you that you're going to hell because they're mad at you or they don't like you. And they glory in the fact that you're going to hell and they're going to heaven. Like God hates fags and you know, all of the, this is their message that you you will be destroyed in your sin versus the gospel and, and Christ, you know? So I'm just going to say this because it's true. You know, growing up in the 90s, I'm 32. So I grew up in the 90s. You know, I was born in the mid 80s. And we will say things like, oh, that's gay or you're a fag, right? And, you know, as a kid, I didn't really know that it really applied to that. But as I got older, I kind of did, you know, and we kind of we kind of glorified against that. Like it was in the, I grew up in the streets, you know, I'm, I'm from, you know, I'm from Chicago, you know what I'm saying? So like around here, you, the way it used to be is like, that wasn't cool back in the day, you know? And um, I just lost my whole train of thought. Damn. The bashing gays or using, using those words slang words, but that I lost my train of thought. Man, that, I was trying no, to that, that's deep too. Like, I don't know if I say that's gay anymore. Maybe I do. I try not to. But there's a lot of things we have to we have to quit saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, like we talked about it yesterday. There's a new thing with the young people. Obviously calling somebody a retard or retarded. That's a no-no. You can't do that. My wife works with uh, disabled children, you know, with cerebral palsy and things like that. And uh, like that's a no-no. You can't say that no more. But now... A lot of people are okay. I'm not going to say it. They got another word to replace it. So now, in like the the, the youth, instead of calling somebody retarded, they'll they'll say you're autistic. Really? They call you autistic? Yeah. Interesting. I ain't heard that. Yep. So now they're making fun of the autistic people, or like if you can't, you don't understand the concept. If you're stupid, they just call you autistic, and they use it like a slang word. Yeah. Wow, and there's yeah, a lot of words. I mean, the N word, you know what I'm saying? Uh, gay, you know, there's words that we have to quit saying. And we, you know, like I had to, like I, when I found out that it offended people, right? I said it around a black guy who was like an old man and he, he wanted to fight me, right? This, when I was young, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And like people get offended. But then I was around other black people who were, they were like, nah, he's, he, you know, they said I was one. Is it not? He's he's a nigga too. Like you know what I'm saying. So it like made me feel okay. I'm I'm one of y'all. You know. And so then I would say it around them, and most of them were cool. But say it around an old person, and they wanted to fight. So I was like, you know what? I gotta quit saying it. You know what I'm saying? Just because you supposedly have a pass around certain people. You know what's interesting about that word? I don't use that word. Um, but what's interesting about it is. It's actually, uh, I think it's Aram uh, Aramaic or Hebrew. It's a Hebrew word, N-I-G-A, pronounced the same way. You know what it means? It means um, something like, uh, uh, oh, it means oppressed. So when you say, yo, that's my, my you know, you say, that's my oppressed. So we speak in oppression to each other. That's my oppressed brother. You know, that's my oppressed. So all day long, yo, my oppressed, my oppressed, you oppressed, you oppressed, right? Literally what it means. Uh, look it up. I, I'm not sure if it's Aramaic or, or uh, Hebrew. 
It means well, there's another one. There, there's a, there's a, there was somebody in the scriptures who was, uh, um, <laughs> it's in, in this, I don't, it, it may have some origins in this, but it's a Greek word in the New Testament. I just looked it up, but it was a person's name. His name was Niger, <laughs> N-I-G-E-R. Mm -hmm. And it yeah, actually gotcha. means, it actually means black in the Greek. <laughs> Niger, N-I-G-E-R. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit different, right? But um, it means black, so, I mean, what the heck? And that was his name. He was probably a dark-skinned brother. Because, like, that's what they called you. Like, you were called, like, you know what I'm saying? Your name had something to do with your characteristics. When I was right. running with the Hebrew Israelites, they would either go back to their Hebrew name, the Hebrew pronunciation of their name, or they would give them a new name. Like in the scriptures, when they got born again, you got a new name. Your name was this. We're going to call you that now because you're not that anymore. And they were known by their characteristics or if they were born in travail or they were there was a kid that wasn't expected. They'll name you or somebody if they dedicated you to God. You know what I'm saying? Your name reflected what your parents called yeah. you. And so this guy's name was Niger and it meant black. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about bringing it back to like the machines and the AI and stuff and uh you know, I just want to clarify, you know, my guy always tells me, he's like, man, you're talking to me on the cell phone right now. If you hate it so much, why don't you go live in the woods? Yeah. I don't hate it. I don't hate technology. It ain't technology's fault. Technology's at the mercy of man's, you know, uh, ingenuity, the way man implements it to be used. But one day it won't be. One day it won't be. You know, the AI will not be at the mercy of man's implementation and how yeah. they the AI will arrange itself and it already is in a lot of ways yeah you know and the stage has been set and uh you know the problem is it tie that this whole AI thing and all the smart stuff it ties in with it's all been part of the plan man and I think it's all part of the Bible I think it has to do with that you know that beast that's going to be worshipped in Revelation I think when it says it'll perform miracles and, you know, the people will have a mark and, you know, all these, it all makes sense, you know, and uh, it says that uh, wisdom, knowledge will be increased in the last days, you know, and I think little things like this that I'm trying to talk on are, is that knowledge that it speaks of, like, uh, so point is, I'm not against technology, you know, I use tech, I'm using it right now to speak to you. It's, it's a great thing, actually. It, has evolved our society, our world. But the problem is there's no, there's no cap or no limit on it. And the men who run the world behind the show, those bloodlines of those families who got all the money in their own the central banking system, they're the ones that are, they've already designed a blueprint for this. You know, they are, it's not like, oh, we just found out this is, no, this shit is like strategically implemented. Yeah, and, and the stuff that, that that we know, they say we're like 50 years behind the technology. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Like Anything certain. that you've seen in like all these movies, like if they, if they thought it up, they've probably done it. Not like yes. we've been we've been growing up watching Star Wars and Star Trek and we know about the course of angels and, and God's angels that have come here and then there's all of this war going on. And now they just now told us that they're going to start a, a new branch of the military called space force. We've been watching star. We knew this stuff was true. It's like, we're like behind. And, they, and you think, you think space force is, is, is brand new. No, <laughs> started. They're letting you know, it just letting you know, you know. It, is, it might be 50 years old. It might be 5,000 years old. And then, you know, you, you know, know. Got another situation where the flat earthers are going to come in and say, well, that's all fake anyway. Oh, fake. man, they, uh, that's why I can't deal with too many flat earthers, because it negates everything that I talk about, this off world and space and all this kind of stuff. And it's like a we're in a bubble, man. <laughs> they're, they're onto something for sure. Yeah. But, you know, as I read the Bible, you know, it does say that, you know, um, I actually have a theory and I might be wrong. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not solid on it, but the Bible says God separated the waters above from the waters below. I think space is not what they tell us that it is. I think that the planets and the stars are there. We see them. Um, I don't personally, I don't think the sun is a star. The Bible says it's a light. It said God made the sun, the moon and the stars. Yeah. It's like me saying, well, I got the frogs, the birds and the humans. I wouldn't say I have the frogs and the frogs. Yeah. I wouldn't say I have the, I, I mean, he, it differentiates them in the Bible, but I'm not here to argue that. Um, it's just, you know, 
I guess something to think about. Something yeah, interesting. I mean, no, they they definitely have some kind of truth. I mean, right? I mean, it wouldn't be as big. I mean, I think everybody has a piece of it, something that they're really good at or yeah. something. But then they're off on all kinds of other things. I mean, we look at every religion under the sun. They got something that they do really good. I mean, who's you know what I'm saying? Who taught you breath work? You said you encountered God in heaven through breath work. And church folks ain't probably told you that. They're getting into it now, though. Praise God. Church folks are getting into breath work and things like that. So everybody has something that they bring to the table that's like a different aspect of God or creation or whatever the case is. And the same thing with flat earthers and everybody else, you know? The body. You got the fingers, the toes, the arms, the eyes. You know, the ears, each piece. And we don't look at just the church as part of that body, but the whole human collective. But when we say the church, I, I don't... We think know, just I, church. I know we think of church for oh, people not, that go to your church. No, <laughs> no, it's not yeah. what it is. The church is the people, actually. Yeah. Not have, ain't no building. Yeah. Like I see people in Bangladesh worshiping God. They ain't got no building. They worship outside in the mud. That's the church, you know? But yeah, man, it's it's the uh, the AI stuff and the machines and everything is we. I think we gotta check ourselves. I like I said, I checked myself in 2015, and I still gotta check myself. Like you know, the 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 enemy, the devil is the he's known as the accuser in the Bible. So I'll have people right that'll watch this podcast and be like, man, this dude over here talking about Jesus swearing. You know, he over here. And look, man, like I do things, you know, and like that's why I I try to say up front, like. I'm not a saint, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not better than nobody. You know, I don't got, it, I mean, sometimes the, it's the best word to use. I mean, I, I, I try not to swear as well, but like sometimes in the moment, there's not a better word. I can try to, you know, describe it and get to it, but look, this is what it is, you know? So sometimes, you know, I think those words are, you know, should be strategically placed maybe, you know? Yeah, I've dropped a couple words, and even on one of my last shows, I said a word, and I was like, I, I, it plagues me, and I think about it. I'm like, damn, I wish I can edit it and all this kind of stuff, but you know, it was in the moment, and it was true. It was the best word that I felt like I could have used, and I used it, you know. But one thing about the AI and the technology, man, how we're advancing, because like, at, at, there was a point when I was first getting into podcasting and getting into spirituality, like. I looked at it like as in Kali Yuga, right? This age to come where man would use the machines to fight against God, right? And uh, and how um, technology was like mimicking spirituality. And I got mad. Like, you know, I know that we're all connected. It, like if we tap into the spirit and we're sensitive on our spiritual giftings and how we're, we're connected, this, you know, with these sacred geometry and things like that, the flower of life, we're all connected. I am another you, you're another me. If we're if we're together, like I can feel things that you're going through. If you're having a bad day, you don't even have to say nothing. Like a lot of times, you can feel it. You can have somebody. You, I mean, we were talking about people being uh, empathic. Empathy is a big thing right now. Every everybody's talking about it. You can feel because you're connected to the universal mind, the global brain. That's a spiritual thing that we're fearfully and wonderfully made that we can tap into. And now you got Facebook. We feel like we're connected through Facebook and it's like just the different technology that's mimicking spirituality. And there's so much more that we could go into, but, and it's making us more disconnected. You know what I'm saying? And like, we feel like we're checking in on our brothers without even like somebody can have a birthday and you can go to, you can go to that page and see it's their birthday and just register. Oh yeah, it was his birthday. You see them two weeks from now. Oh, I seen your birthday, man. And Everybody was there. You could tell them everybody who was there. Some, who was there? <laughs> it, they, yeah, because they seen the pictures. <laughs> but sometimes, uh, but like, they they feel like um, like it 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 curbs that social appetite. They feel social, like that. They, 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 it curbs their social interaction through the cell phone. It's not real, and the per the other person doesn't know you didn't call them on their birthday. You know what I'm saying? You just seen they had a birthday. You might even click like. Uh, let them. That means happy birthday. Whatever the case is, and it's just it's re it's rewiring the way our brains our brains work, and um, you know, and it well it's the 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 uh social neural pathways, the sex relationship. I mean, look at Tinder in these apps where dating is gone, courting a woman is gone, sex with like working up to sex is gone for the next generations. There's apps that they say, I want to have sex with you. Do you want to have sex with me? 
They both click yes, exchange numbers, meet up, and do it. That is, like, we we literally, we're changing, bro. Like, they don't have to, like, go up and ask a woman out. Like, they're going to the dances around here. Like, most of these kids went to the dances alone. They just had homecoming. Those kids are going to the dance alone because they don't have that, that, that type of interaction. It's not all of them across the board, right? But we're changing. And then even sexually, like, people even have a sex with their phones, like it's curbing your sexual appetite with pornography and anytime you want to just get that quick impulse of that quick release. And we know that anything, the quick release or the, or the quick uh, satisfaction, the release of dopamine instantly is never good. It's never good. That's where drugs come into play. That's where Molly comes into play. All of this kind of stuff. And we can just go on and on with that. Yeah, man, a lot of, lot of stuff there. Are they using it to their advantage, but literally, like, you ain't got to. You know, when you were saying uh, with the birthday thing and, like, people are, you know, replacing physical social experience with, you know, uh, digital social experience. Here's the thing, though, at the end of the day. People, like, I'm a a sensitive person and, you know, in the spirit and, like, just, you know, these, these things. So... I can sense, and I know for me personally, and I know for probably 95% of the population, they, even people think that they are good and they want it that way, but actually deep down, they long for a relationship outside digital. They want that physical. They just have been, they've been either conditioned from that, from their, you know, young age or reconditioned, you know, people our age to just accept this as the new norm and accept that. But, you yeah. know, like I got, a, I got a buddy who's like, you know, I constantly talk to him about like, you know, dating chicks and, you know, you know, are you seeing anyone right now and this and that. And he, he, he always, you know, he's on the dating apps and, and um, I use the dating apps too, you know, I, um, because I don't really go out, you know, I got a kid and all these things, but point in case, you know, my buddy's like, yeah, man, I, you know, I can't really approach a woman in person. Now, I, I'm more successful in person. I'm yeah. kind of old fashioned and I'd rather ask a girl out in person, um, which is going to lead me into the next thing I want to say. But people long for that social, physical, social relationship, yeah. even though. So it's almost like we're settling and then we're conditioned to settle for this digital relationship type yeah. thing. It, well, it, uh, I think I think that it feels a need. Like there's a need there for those people who are socially awkward. Let me go mm-hmm. in here. Let me tell you about myself. I don't go out. I don't date. I suck at it. This is who I am. And there's plenty of fish. And there's, there's people who have met online who've gotten married and they're great for one another, right? And it's worked. Right. But it's, like you said, it's becoming the norm, you know? Now, I want to branch off what I said. And this is a completely different topic. So I'll just brush on it lightly. But like... Uh, because of social media and because of the new age of, you know, selfies and everyone's a photographer, right? <laughs> uh, all these women are are out there. You know, it used to be like when I was a kid, it was like Maxim Magazine, you know, with the fine women and you see them in bikinis, right? Or the uh, Sports Illustrated Magazine. Now it's just Instagram, Facebook, you know, Snapchat, whatever. Um, and it's a constant frustration, even just walking outside in public, you know, everyone's got, you know, the. I'm not gonna get into it, but, these women, these beautiful women are You got a so, song about it on the new album. Yes, Lust of the Flesh, man. And, and that's uh, the woman doing that chorus. Is, she's beautiful, man. And she's very talented. And it was an honor to work with her. But these women are so bombarded with, you're so fine. I want to have sex with you. Look at my whatever, you know, sending pics of your, your that's shit. That's insane. And, yeah. You know, like, don't even know the person. And, um, just they're so bombarded uh the authenticity and the genuous genuineness of an actual good level-headed man being interested in a woman it doesn't work no more because they're like well you know 500 people told me that this week that they want to take me to dinner but these aren't people that are in relationship so what's happened is because of these pictures and people seeing each other i mean motherfucker might be married and be like man you're so beautiful you know like 700 people i've talked to some of these girls who are on dating sites they're like yeah i get about 120 messages a day a day can't even read them all i can imagine on the flip side a man don't even get 20 i mean or or sometimes one you know yeah 
a day. You know what I mean? But the women, I mean, yeah. they're, and it's tra- the same way that all these things you said are conditioning our brain. It's conditioning their brain to be desensitized to authenticity and genuine interest in the real world. Hey, you know, approaching a woman, can I help you with your groceries? You know, uh, yeah. I mean, name, even, even with that, like plastic surgery, like getting like Botox and stuff like that in these fake butts. What about the dudes with the fake muscles? I know you've seen them guys. You look like you've been working out. You've been, I've been seeing Instagram. You've been in the gym. There's guys who will get shots and get fake muscles. Now you can tell the difference because it looks horrendous. You know what? Yeah, and the dude, I, I, I talk to these cats and I'm in the gym every day. It's my thing, you know? And I talk to these cats. I'm like, you know, I'm working towards you. I'm working towards you. You know, this one dude goes, uh, yeah, man, you know, there's there's special things you could take to boost you up. And I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm good. You know, he's like, He's like, you ain't done steroids yet? I'm like, no. He's like, you will. I said, no, I won't. It's a glory to be had in doing this shit naturally. Well, the thing about it is like most of them big dudes, they got to take something because the body's only going to get so big unless you're taking that stuff, right? I know dudes, they lift, but they super lean. And uh, and they just lift and they do a lot of weight. And they're just, they have their nice build, but that's it. They're not like bulking up and they're not adding bulk um because they say like you you have to like go beyond you know you're gonna like max out and get like all that kind of stuff so they all end up doing steroids most of those guys in the gym are doing steroids so that's why and so that's why they approach you and say oh you will if you're really trying to get to that next level you will that's what they're telling you yeah that's just like the world in general oh you don't do this you will you know or the just oh, you, you, you got to well, see. And so that should be more motivation not to for you. It you is. know what I'm saying? It is. It is. Yeah. And I've come a long way. I got a long way to go. And, you know, uh, it's just proper nutrition and discipline. And that's yeah. what I'm on right now. You know, that's my little thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, even with the, with the Botox things like YouTubers, there's young people. They're just getting like there's this YouTuber that my wife and my daughter watches. It's called Nerdy Nummies and they make pastries and cakes and they got hoodies and merch and it's little cute stuff. This girl, she went on the other, her whole lip was all the way up to her nose. She went and got like shot Botox in her lip. She can't even talk. And it's like, <laughs> this is crazy. Cause this is a young woman, good looking woman. She isn't even old. She, and like my daughter's like, yeah, that's what they do now. And girls look at each other and say, Oh, you can use, you know, these shots here and there. Look, you talk, I got to run, go get the mail. You talk on that. I'll be right back. Oh, you're going to leave me alone, man. I, I, go ahead. <laughs> I don't even, who am I talking to, though? Uh, put me on the spot. Leave me alone here. Well, I guess I'll promote my album. If you don't, if you haven't heard it, uh, my name's Spirit of Truth. It's a, streaming on every digital platform, iTunes, Amazon, uh, CD Baby, Apple Music, uh, whatever you use, it's it's on there. Uh, the album's called What We've Become, 16 full-length tracks. Everything's all exclusive, all new. One producer uh, just dropped on September 11th. Uh, I'm also on Instagram, Spirit of Truth Official. If you want to give me a follow there, uh, my YouTube is also Spirit of Truth Official. Feel free to subscribe. So I just use that time to blast out all my my <laughs> all my social media stuff. Why don't and, you do that, man? We do that at the end. We're not at the end. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> nah, I'm joking. <laughs> I know I'm doing, I'm alone, you, know? you say you by yourself, dude. There's a lot of people watching right now and listening on the podcast. So, no, nah, I'm, I, can't I'm, see I'm the com- I can't see the comments. I can't, you know. For sure. Um, yeah, dude. So, I mean, that's just weird. That's just another way of how like society's changing. And then they look at us if we have a problem with it. My daughter said, y'all just old. It's 2019. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because this is because they're already rewired. Uh, you know, they're all, they, they, have, they have to like, because they came up with it. That was like normal to look at another girl and say, oh, yeah, you can you can use maybe one or two on each side shots. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, goodness, this is crazy, you know, thinking about that and just how society's changing. And then, you know, it, it, it's it's inevitable, though, again, prolonging the um, inevitable because our parents said that about us. Why y'all doing this? I can't stand why y'all do that. Why y'all got to, you know. That's, I was actually going to say that. You just reminded me, like, yeah. uh, when I was a little sagging the pants, right? 
always sag the pants, baggy, baggy clothes, you know? That was my thing. I can't and, stand uh, it anymore, though. I did, too, it, but now I, I, I... Actually, what I do, you know, I, I jeopardize physical confrontations because I'll, I'll tell them, hey, man, your, pant, your pants are falling down. Did you wash your ass today? Because your ass is hanging out, you know? And, and it's just like, for me, I get offended, you know? And I'm... <laughs> I guess it just comes with aging, you know? I it's don't so know. weird. Like, we grew up and grew out of that, but not everybody did. Like, they still yeah. do it. Like, grown I, men. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, damn, that's still a thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Still a go, thing. <clears throat> um, go, going back to the the um, the AI, uh, looking at, like, uh, like I said, I was against it at first, but now I'm looking at it. I like technology, too. I'm with you. We're able to have this this conversation. There's people listening to us all over the world um right now which is amazing uh, it's because of technology um there's so many advancements that we're making and i love it i love ai i love i love uh vr virtual reality like that's crazy to be like even with your smartphone and, and there's goggles you can put on a glasses and it literally you feel like you're like inside of a video game just with your phone not e i'm not even talking about oculus or something like it's really crazy it's fun i, I really like that kind of stuff and then like what about like ads? So they say your phone is always listening to you, right? right. Um, they have the special ads. ads. It, 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 your phone and Google knows more about us than we know about ourselves. Um, it's weird. They're always listening. There's no privacy. It's something that's been happening. But I would say that I, I do like the fact that I'm able to see ads that they can recommend me. I don't think that they're showing me these ads because they're trying to sell me something. They've heard us talk and they say, you know what? I need some new razors. I need to buy some new razors. Okay, this company's paid. True Seeking needs new razors. Let's show them razors, right? I would rather see the razor ad for something that I need versus or a website that I've been to with a cookie, right? You know, you go to a website, you look up a band and now you see in their new album everywhere or their video. Even before YouTube, you go to a YouTube video to watch my video and you're seeing the band that you Googled. They have a new album and it's showing you like it's kind of convenient versus seeing like I don't need to see tampon ads. Like I don't need to see, you know, what I'm saying like they're like these companies would be wasting their ad revenue to show me these ads. Us as artists can take advantage of that. You can go to Spotify and you can target Immortal Technique fans with your new album. You can say, I I'll, I'll, I'll have my new album and I want to do a promo and I only want people to, that listen to Immortal Technique because that's my, that's my demographic. My demographic is not Shania Twain. I don't need Shania Twain fans uh, seeing my ad. So because they know that they listen to it, whether it's recording on the phone or they just know they play their station, all of that kind of works together. What do you think about that? I think it's kind of cool. Well, I mean, with the last thing you said with the Spotify, obviously, as an artist, yes, that's, <laughs> that's prime. That's prime meat right there. And uh, I've actually been I started an ad and I, and I got caught up. And it's like, but here's the thing. I, I, those aren't two same things. I mean. The Spotify targeted ad is, is nothing in relation to them listening to your phone, okay? And actually, you know, people, a lot of people are like, oh, well, if you're not doing nothing wrong, why does it matter? Yeah. It's an invasion of privacy. And, you know, it's just, if you give someone an inch, they take a mile. So, like, how far is it going to go? Are you going to be watching me have sex with my wife, you know, and listen to the way that sounds or whatever it is, you know, uh, my prayers with my children, like that's for me and God. Like, I mean, if you want to pray with us, come on through, but like, you, you know, then what you, so the thing is, is like, as you were speaking, there's again, so many things coming to my mind and uh, I have short term memory. So I lose a lot of them. <laughs> I'll, be <writing laughs> I'll be scribbling stuff down. Just and I should, I should. Yeah. I didn't think of that, but I think that's the trick that they have. You know, and here's your conspiracy, I guess, they've implemented is to say, well, it's all for the greater good. You have a smart meter on your gas, you know, that uh, on your gas thing that we know when you use it for whatever. Your fridge is smart. It knows when you want your water. Yeah. We know. I used to, I, I went to college for GIS, right? Geographic Information Systems. And basically it's location-based data. So I was working uh, and basically, man, we can do predictive analytics and I'll tell you what time you're going to the grocery store with your wife and what you'll buy. And then I also know when you'll be going to the gym and what time you'll be leaving. 
you know, and I can do these predictive analytics and it's very surface level, but it goes really deep. And they give us stuff like, you know, people will say, oh, well, you know, it's so convenient. It's so convenient. Uh, but speaking of immortal technique, I was just listening to him yesterday in the gym and he said, uh, what was his lyric? He says, uh, it's like a nation trading freedom for stability or a nation trading freedom for convenience, mm -hmm. you know, shit like this. Like, uh, there's just certain things, you know, they want us to surrender our weapons, um, you know, for the thought that no one will, no one will shoot each other if there's no weapons. Well, no one would be have food poisoning if there wasn't no food either. I mean, it's not always that black and white and that simple, you know, but um, as far as them listening, you know, through the Alexa, and I mentioned that in a song, you know, the Alexas and the Google Homes and all that. I mean, we don't do none of that in this house, you know, but uh, I, I do see where it can be convenient. But at the same time, it goes against, I think, what this country was was built upon and what this country represents. And that's, you know, freedom. And, and I don't uh, know, man, I think, like you're saying, there's somebody who scripted this stuff like they have a plan and there's certain people who need to be elected because we can only pass these laws if that guy's up there the people won't riot the people won't rebel if the person that they elected so there's the illusion of choice let's make them think that they were asking for this sure. so no you guys you guys voted for trump we didn't give you trump y'all got the people got what they wanted like i don't think that that's what happened i think that that that's a, a position of too much power to just leave it up to the people, right? That's definitely not what's going on. There's like there's only certain laws that they can pass if the if the left is there versus the right. Just like Obama, very at the Obama was cool until the very end, and he passed all this bathroom stuff and this weird gender stuff, right? That was at the very end. He snuck it in right before he left office, which was very strange, but that was tactful. If what if he would have did that at the beginning? I don't really. Could, talk about obama and trump today <laughs> huh? i didn't i didn't come well i mean no no that. no it's not even about obama and trump i'm saying it's bigger i, I they, they're nothing they're just they're, they're I, I feel like they were selected though you know what i'm saying like i don't think that they yeah. it's the old white men behind them like behind yeah, obama and trump are some old white men yeah. who are no who are drinking you know, uh adrenochrome to try to right. live forever and they're they're literally I talked about this the other day they're literally putting young people's blood in their bodies to stay younger and healthier and more vibrant and, and things like that and some of my people uh in the movement that we're in have said to me you know um don't you think that trump is a puppet and that he was elected and this is the extent of what i'm gonna say and i said maybe maybe but the 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 soldier in me that's like unity rise you know togetherness let's Let's rise up against this tyranny. The unity in me wants to have the hope and the faith to believe that we we actually were able to do it this time and elect someone outside of the person they chose. But then again, maybe that's the ploy. Maybe it's like, you know, <laughs> so I'm, again. You're not the only one who feels that way. Like you said, some of these people are so close-minded and they know it all with the flat earth and they know it all with this and that and this and that. My Instagram's controversial if motherfuckers look at my story. You know, I got a lot of controversial stuff, but I do it. Uh, not everything I put in my story I necessarily believe. I want to talk about it. I want to see what you have to say about it. I want to get the thoughts rolling. You know what I mean? Um, but the, 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 the child of light inside of me and the believer in faith wants to believe yeah we did we 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 overcame their you know the person that they wanted elected and we we did it now let's build upon it am i i could be wrong you know and i don't firm i'm not a hundred percent on that but it's i guess it's better to it's the optimistic view of that with with pre, with the president trump yeah i feel like they would undo a lot of this stuff though you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, we gave y'all, you know, four or eight years of that. I'm undoing it all. Now the other side won. Now it's our turn. We finna undo everything that y'all passed. And people were saying, well, they are undoing it. Or it's not just that easy. You can't just go in there and undo it. They got to pass bills and all that kind of stuff. Um, Again, if we're talking about, you, you, because you mentioned, I mean, that this stuff is scripted. Somebody is like meticulously planning this stuff out. There was you know? a video I watched, though, and it's, you know, talking about it. This is a lot, you know, a lot of people, all the bad guys, the people who run the world, the bad guys. And, and this man said something very interesting. He goes, where are the good guys? 
And then he said, I'm going to send you this video someday. On a, I'll, I'll text it to you. He said, actually, the good guys do exist, you know, and here's where they're at, you know. So, but I, I want to regress and go back to the whole listening to the phone thing because there's something I, I want to talk. Maybe we don't have time to talk about it, but I want to throw out there smart dust. Okay. That's been around for a long time. Who way made smart dust years ago? I was talking about it and, uh, they were laughing at me, but now it's like, you know, it was in the news, you know, dust particles, nanoparticles that even that we breathe in, that's in the food, you know, that we eat and gets activated in us. I think those cell towers have something to do with the activation of those nanoparticles, but I'm not going to go too deep in that. I also want to mention, uh, people don't know about this remote neuro monitoring. I was told I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I have to. It's RNM remote neuro monitoring. Uh, there was a movie called Gamer with Gerard Butler where they put nano. Did you see that movie? Yeah. They put the nano, uh, what do they call it? Nano neurons inside of the brain and they can control. Remember at the end, he was having to move his arm up and do this. I think those mass shootings have to do with that for sure. Voice to mind technology, um, you know, and I. I'm just going to shoot these off. I don't, you know, we don't got to go too deep into them, but these are things I think about talking with you that we never really get into. So I know we've been talking a while and I, I just kind of, I want to shoot those out there. We, I haven't I, done a long podcast in a while, so let's keep going. People are, people are missing <laughs> them. They're like, you only did an hour, hour and a half. Where's the three hours? That was? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I advise people to check into remote neuromonitoring. The most common article you'll find, I want you to yeah. look at the date. I want you to look at the date. Um, it's 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 known. Actually, Michigan passed the law, the state of Michigan. I was doing some work downtown Chicago where I'd have to look into the ordinances of, of different towns, cities, yeah. uh, the states, state ordinances. The state of Michigan had at the time, which was a year ago, in their ordinance, the federal government is not allowed to conduct remote neuromonitoring on their citizens. Yeah. And, and that's people, new, though, right? I mean, because they did. Sure, the go the federal government is going to override the state. The, I mean, so I mean, it's kind of interesting you you mention that because I don't really look into a lot of this stuff, but I did see a video someone was streaming on Facebook yesterday that was about that. I mean, they were showing how uh, they they were able to take a bull and they were to, able to put the computer chip in the bull's brain, and it gives them a little shock on a certain neurotransmitter or whatever. And so, as the bull is charging the person, they push the button, the bull stops immediately before yeah. it charges the person. And they were showing how they did this, and then they were saying that they did it on people as well. They were able to do it to people. Yeah. They did MK uh, Ultra years ago. I mean, well, even like on like Yahoo, I remember this had this was probably 15 years ago, on the front page of Yahoo, they had figured out how to take that and put it on a dragonfly. Something yeah. uh, showing on the back yeah. of the dragonfly skull, a little computer chip plugged in. They were able to control the dragonfly with a camera on it like it was a drone. This is a living organism that they've mixed with AI to create this. You know, they can control it, tell it where to go. Yeah, and This is old news. Yeah, this is you know, super that, old. That, yeah. that, that article about the remote, the RNM, that's from 2011. Mm -hmm. This is 2019, you yeah. know, and that and back then they're like, you know, it's conducted. Time Magazine had something. Uh, I still have the magazine here, actually. It's right over there. Uh, Merging AI. They said by 2040, the the uh, AI will surpass the collective of all the intelligence, the collective intelligence of all human brain combined on the planet. How you much know? is too much, though? Because, like I said, we're, we're definitely, you know, you were, we're taking advantage of it. I mean, some of this stuff, like maybe having a smartphone in your wrist, may be okay. A computer, like uh, what? Do you, like what? What's too much? Putting it in your body? Well, for Go me, bro, what sorry. about what about like Google Glass, uh, like a contact lens that you can wear where you can see everything in front of you and your Google Maps and all that? Wouldn't that be cool though? Would I would I having to look yeah, down? You have like yeah. the map. Yes, but for me, I guess the fear, the, the concern that arises is the Bible says, you know, that without the mark of the beast, you will not be able to purchase or sell anything, right? So there's coming a time where if you don't have that mark worldwide, you won't be able to get food unless you're growing it. You won't be able to buy, you won't be able to pay your rent, you won't be able to buy gas, you know what I'm saying, or pay your electric bill. And it's cold out here in the winters in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we got to have heat. So we got to stuff. So what way does it not, is it not clear as day that that's going to be some sort of digital form of 
you know, payment. I mean, no, well, honestly, my my truth is is that it's relative to every generation. Like for us, yeah. Like for us, that's what it is. But for the generation, I interviewed a good friend of mine <clears throat> some time ago. Um, his family um, believed that the social security card was the mark of the beast because when it was just coming out. And so they, they got it. They got the social. So they feel like they're they're doomed. Like they sold well, their soul. That makes sense. But the Bible does say, and someone brought this up to me, they said, you will know it's the mark of the beast and you'll willingly take it. It I don't even that. think with that we'll know because with the mark of the beast, it's like everybody, they force everybody. And there's like, we still have untouched tribes all over the world, man. You know what I'm saying? And the, and the, the Antichrist is going to force everyone to take, these people don't even have technology yet. You know what I'm saying? So for us to think that, because <clears throat> I used to be there, like when I, when I first got into this Alex Jones, mark of the beast, concentration camps, all, it's in my music, you know, and I, went from that to spirituality but that's what woke me up to a lot of the the deeper truths but it, it's relative to every generation right because every generation since the time of jesus have felt like they are the last generation when you understand that and you read the bible it becomes a lot more clear because paul is like look y'all don't even get married we got to prepare for the end it's coming it's here and literally like their end they met their demise and from what I believe, a lot of, you know what I'm saying, preterists and stuff like that, that a lot of that those prophecies were fulfilled through uh, 70 years after Christ. And he said that this generation won't pass away. You know, you know, I, I did that video on that. But I, but even when I did that video, I didn't even know the, of what, you know what I'm saying, preterism was. Like there was these people who believed that a lot of that stuff was fulfilled. And I'm saying that just to say that there's a lot of different uh, interpretations that if we listen to it and we do the research, they all make sense. Like the locusts that will be released from the pits of hell to torment men for six months or whatever. Like people are like drawing pictures of that and they're drawing pictures of like these uh, helicopters and these bombers and the stars are falling from the heavens in Revelation. Wow. And wow. Yeah, like the stars falling from Reve in heavens in Revelation and Wormwood are these nukes that are falling. And so they didn't know nothing about that. Obviously, they didn't have those words and things like that. But mm -hmm. they all interpreted it the best they could with symbolism, with signs, with allegory and stuff yeah. like that. Again, it comes down to we don't know. You know what I'm saying? So for us to say that this is the mark of the beast, which I'm saying I used to we used to preach this on the co street corners. You know, when I ran with the Well, Israel, I don't know what it is, but I do. Well, we used to say it was the RFID chip, you know, the, you know what I'm saying? The radio frequency right, identification. If it, the only way that I would think that is the mark of the beast is if it was mandatory that yeah. you can only buy stuff with that and nothing else. You could not purchase stuff unless you had that. Then I would say, well, that's clear as day. Because the Bible said that would happen. Yeah, it if it said, was mandatory and like every like you had to have it, which I mean, you know, you I mean, the, it, 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 it would it would like if that's if that's your worldview, like you could make it fit, is what I'm saying. Like it could fit, right? Because I believed it. And I thought I literally thought that that was it. Well, I think that know? whether it's an RFID chip or anything, it is. Once there comes a point where there's only one way to buy stuff, and that's it. Yeah. Well, and I'll tell you this. Let me let me just you, let me throw this in there. Back in the time of Constantine and at the end of, the, you know, the, you know what I'm saying, the, when, whenever the Roman Empire took over, like when they made this new, they made this new, they made a one world religion and they called it Catholicism and you had to bow down to the sign of the cross, right? And you had to worship this way. We know that all of these pagan holidays, they kind of mixed Christianity, the true religion of Christ and Peter and these guys, they took that and they mixed it with the Roman Empire and Babylonian worship and Canaanite worship and all of these Egyptian stuff and all of it's kind of mixed together through the Catholic Church. And I say that because the word Catholic means universal. It's the universal religion that you can still, you can follow this and still worship the ancient gods. We can still uh, bow down and worship Tammuz through the person of Jesus uh, with the Christmas tree, with Ishtar, Easter. I mean, we get into the, you know what I'm saying, Babylonian traditions and we see how it was mixed together. I say all that just to say that there was the sign of the cross that you would have to have on your hand or your forehead. And they, uh, they put out a decree, you can look it up, that you were not to be able to buy, sell, or do commerce with anybody 
outside of the Roman Empire who did not have the sign of that of the cross, whether they didn't, you know, what I'm saying, believe with that ideology or literally they would have the cross on their foreheads. We know that like that's Catholic tradition for like Ash Wednesday or whatever to put the cross on your forehead, put the ash on your hands. Uh, you, you know, when, whenever you turn 13, you you get uh, you go through the ritual with the priest and they slap you and say, if you ever depart from the faith, you know, you're you know going to be whatever. So to, to so when I started looking that stuff up and then reading the colors and the whore of Babylon was draped in purple and the wine of her fornication. And it was like describing all of this symbolism. I was like, damn, that's the Catholic church. We've been given something called Pauline Christianity. That is nothing like the Christianity of the Bible. And to say, man, these people were killed. Like we talk about like, you know, the, the Christians, like, and we all want to be the people of the book, right? We want we feel like there's an urgency, you know, Christ is coming back for his elect. We want to be a part of the, that people. And so we can look at the climate and seeing how Christian persecutions out there. And like, they're getting ready to, man, during, this was during the Bush stuff that I got into all the Bush administration. And I thought that they literally was about to start tracking Christians down and we're going to have, they're going to cut our heads off. You would hear stories of an 18 wheeler flipped over that was marked government and it was full of guillotines and they would share these stories in the churches. And we're like, Oh, they're getting ready to come hunt us down. Cause if, if we don't, if we don't denounce Christ, they're going to kill us. But that already happened. It happened with the martyrs. And you read the Fox's book of martyrs, you read the Christians who were hunted, who were treated as game. Like there were rewards, go out and get them and we'll reward you. And they were fed, fed to lions. It's definitely like, it's, it's definitely happening. Not to that extent. This was in Bush, the Bush administration. It was like 2006. I felt like the end was any day. Concentration camps, FEMA camps, the King Alfred plan. They, they have a plan to exterminate all the black people and all the native Americans and like all of this crazy conspiracy stuff that i not only believed, but I taught, you know what I'm saying? And I convinced others to believe but just because of the, the cult that I was a part of, which the cult was the Hebrew Israelites who, you know, I seen all the, sim, you know, what I'm saying? all this, all the similarities by watching other, how other cults perform and how they convince people that we're living in the end times and stuff. But every, Every civilization has always felt like they're at the end. Anyway, that's just some of the things that I studied that just let me know, hold on, I don't have it all figured out to say that beyond the sh without a shadow of a doubt that the RFID is the mark of the beast. And I could see how it fits the worldview. And I'll tell you this, if you believe it's the mark of the beast in your consciousness, it is. And if you take that, you're damned. Like in your, you've damned yourself. You're like, man, I, I got to dig this thing out, you know, uh, and that's how just the power of the mind and 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 uh and all that, man. So go ahead. I know I've been rambling. You go ahead. Give me your rebuttal. Uh, I mean, I feel you on saying if you believe it, then you know, because there's, you know, in the Bible it says, you know, one man's conviction might not be another man's. But there's also, you know, the thought that I have that the truth is the truth, regardless. It's the I say this: the truth is not contingent of man's acceptance of it. So at the end of the day, there's truths right now that have existed for eternity that man doesn't know and it doesn't make them untrue not to the unbelievers and to these guys are like show me show me the proof i mean they'll, <laughs> they'll sit there and argue it's not truth but then you've shown the proof and they're like damn it was truth when you thought it was a lie you know um i don't know my mind keeps wanting to go back to the to the the nano dust <laughs> 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 what I mean, I, 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 let me just pick it back off of this. Just to go because, like, so there's going to be these things to come out, right? And and it's definitely happened in the church. We just we it's it's new. Well, it it was new at some point, and they resisted it. The gay marriage, you know, it was resisted. It's accepted now. You know, if you speak out against it, we're going to revoke your five hundred one c three license. You're not going to be a registered church. You're not going to receive funding. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so there's different. That's true in the whole U.S. Exactly. So there's these different laws. But do you remember when that was first introduced? I was definitely in church and they were like, we're going to fight against it and we're standing up for righteousness. But if we look back at the, the scriptures, there was those people were different than what we are now. Like there was a lot of things. A woman was not able to pray with her head covered. You know what I'm right. saying? If we look at like Hinduism or even I'm go out on limb and say a lot of Islam, the way they carry themselves. The Bible says a woman should not adorn herself with 
uh, you know, jewelry and putting makeup on and making herself look good. And then we look at our church and then we look at Islam or we look at Hinduism or whatever. Maybe not Hinduism, but definitely Islam. It looks more like of what we read in the Bible than what we have now. So we're like, hold on. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and I've said for a long time, you know, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of things that the Islamic faith practices that I actually believe that they do it better than than my faith. For you know, sure. They fall on their face when they pray to God. Mm-hmm. Actually, when I'm alone, that's one of the things I do sometimes is I pray, you know, on my face because that's how I come before God. I mean, I'm nothing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There's a there's a couple of different ways to pray. And I believe that they all have power. You know, the scripture talks a lot about, I have a study on just like all of the, I just ripped the Bible apart, studying ways to pray and prostrate was one of them. And then lifting up holy hands, lifting up your hands. Yeah, we, lift so hand. we always yeah, say, no matter where we were, like, you guys want to pray? My hands are going up. Uh, whether we're receiving energy or we're emitting, I don't know. But I do feel like there's something that takes place you're within our genetic makeup. You're surrendering to God. You know, we... We worship. I say it in my in my song, Triumphant. You know, uh, all, uh, honoring God with worship and clap, and always encouraging purpose and passion. You know, like mm-hmm. uh, we clap our hands, we shout with a loud voice. You know, that's what the Bible says: shout with a loud voice yeah. to the Lord, and uh, lift our hands. You know, and uh, yeah, sp- speaking in tongues, which is a whole other thing. I'm not gonna go into that, but I want to say something. I want to rewind a little bit. You mentioned like with the Alexas and stuff. Well, I mentioned uh, they're listening to the speakers. You know, this whole con- I make a joke with everyone I talk to. I say, just remember this call. This conversation is being monitored and recorded for quality service. You know, because they want they they're listening. Yeah. But not only that, I watched a TED talk. There was a Facebook project. It was called like Building Forty Nine or some shit. I don't. It wasn't Forty Nine. You know. The, the, well, no. There's a there's a Christian band called Building Four Two Nine. Okay. Shout yeah, out I know that. Homie. But, you know, there was a, a building 29. It was some building. Okay. And it was a building on Facebook's main campus or whatever. And actually, the uh, a high exec from Google was acquired by Facebook to do this project. There was a TED Talk on it. It was a female that headed it that, that came from Google, a Google exec. A fe- I don't remember her name. But basically, they're saying, look, here's what's happening. You know, we know what you're thinking. And we're going to use that the same way that they generate ads based on what you talk about and what you search. They're like, we are going to use what you're thinking to generate ads. And the person they had like a devil's advocate, and they're like, that's too much. You can't look in my mind and see. And she's like, and she goes like this. This is a TED talk. She goes, don't worry. We're only looking at the things in your mind that pertain to the ads that we need to, uh, to give you. <laughs> And yeah. that, that to me was just so funny, like, because people will believe that. So here's my point in it all is there's real conversations on real, you know, worldwide renowned, respected platforms about them sure. generating ads based on what we think. Thought crimes. Thought I mean, we look in, what was that movie that talked all about this uh, with Tom Cruise, the thought crimes? I, oh, oh, um. I know what you're talking about. Come on, fact checkers, help us out. You, I know you guys know it. The Tom Cruise movie. Was it the one where he kept dying? No, that was a good movie, though. Yeah, it was. Thought Police, Thought Crime, it was called Minority Report. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, again, it's like, isn't there an alarm set off? And also now that I'm on the topic, you asked me a question earlier and said, when is it too much? And I have an answer for that. I have a direct answer. It's too, look, the problem is, I guess when morals become uh, thrown out the window, values, morals, integrity, when those things are- We've been past that, bro. We've been past that. Look, I'll give you an example. You know, I'm, I'm, there's part of me that's proud to be an American and what the country's supposed to stand for. I believe it. I, I know that our leaders don't really add, you know, follow that, but uh, capitalism, right? I think capitalism could be a great thing. The problem I have with capitalism is that there's no cap. Again, there's no cap on it. So for example, be, uh, Shell went over to Ecuador. They extracted oil from their land. Well, guess what? Ecuador doesn't have any policies or regulations on dumping waste. 
So they, so Shell's like, well, we're going to save a hundred million dollars and dump it in the river in a local river. Yeah. Well, like tons and tons of locals die because of the toxins that were released in that river. And that's water that they use, you know? So the local people in the indigenous or whatever you want to call them over there, they're, it's not really civilized. They got like irrigation systems and stuff, but there's no, you know, it's, it's more tribal, you know, and their children and them, they, they suffered like hundreds of people died because of the unethical way that Shell dumped their toxins when they were extracting the oil from the ground into the water. Uh, but Shell's point was, well, we saved hundreds of millions of dollars. And they're like, you know, if we did the math and we divided, say, 150 people died and let's divide it by 300 million, each person's life is not worth $80 million to us or $20 million. That's how month. they look at it. For sure. That's how they look at it. And that's the problem. So that's the answer to the question. When is it too much? When money and 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 convenience and uh, try and think of some more things here, like financial benefit, convenience, and just yeah. Not, I mean, know, I think I think that's the whole thing. Those, with not you know, what I'm saying nine eleven as well. When those things become more important than human life and yeah. and, and integrity of you know uh, raising these children the right way. You know, which we could debate what the right this way is. is. A, uh, so this is a great. I, I'm with you. That's when it's too much, bro. I, my, I, I think we've, I think we've, and I, your album and this conversation, I think it's proof that we've far past that in many different ways, you know. Uh, again, I just mentioned 9-11, but you're talking about the children and you're talking about, you know, the ecosystem and maybe climate control and just tearing up the environment and stuff like that. And I wrote this down. I wanted to ask you about it. I don't know how much you know, but... Uh, what is your thoughts on Greta Thornburg and have you seen her? I've only seen a couple things and I haven't heard her speak, but my thoughts so far from what I've seen is that she has been implemented into a place in the media by uh, some An sort old of white man, maybe. An old white man, <laughs> yes. Yeah. She is being utilized for a purpose. She is a tool. Uh, Asian provocateur is the wrong word, but it's something along those lines where it's someone that's strategically placed and implemented and they're exploiting a little girl. And I also saw that that's what the um, Nazis did. Yeah, you know, where they, they have the pictures of the little girl that looks just like her and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. so I haven't, I, you know, to be fair, I haven't heard her speak. I I'll don't tell know. you what, she moved her her speech moved me to tears, man. Like it's pretty pretty deep, you know. And uh, like there's that, and 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 I think the majority of the conspiracy people that will kind of take the stance that you just gave, you know, and maybe I do. Again, I don't know, right? But there's, there's I don't two know sides. exactly. Yeah. We don't know, but there's definitely that, and a lot of people take that. I, I shared one of her speeches just. No, they. I didn't share the speech. Uh, Trump <laughs> at the UN thing. Trump got there, and the guards held her back from Trump. Were like, she wasn't trying to get to him, but they were like, they whisked her away. It's like we need to keep you away from Trump when he gets here, because she, because she's like calling them out, and she's like in tears, saying, "How dare you? How dare you? How dare you?" And it moves the heart of the people. But then again, people saying okay. that she's, uh, they think that you know she's an agent, and uh, no, but and how I, dare. How dare Trump? What? What is she? No, her... not just to Trump, to everyone. Like, how dare you? Like, not care about the planet? How you know? And you're like, we won't. You know, they think we only have so many years to live and depleting the world's resources. It wasn't just to Trump. It was. It was to the UN, right before the the world. Why don't we look at? Why don't we look at the real problem? I mean, what instead of addressing? Look here, and I don't want to say instead of addressing, but why don't we look at China? Instead of sitting here, we got the celebrities, you know, spending a million dollars on them. I just got me a Bugatti, right? They just got them a Bugatti. And then they go on TV with some ad campaign about how you shouldn't use a straw. Well, that's capitalism, you, bro. <laughs> like, they earned it. <laughs> that's fine. I'm not hating on them. But yeah. how are you going to sit and practice what you preach is what I'm saying. How are you going to sit here and watch all these kids starve that you could have fed and then tell me you care about the children? It's like these people who are like... Uh, the liberal thing where they're like, oh, you know, we got to save these kids from uh, being taken from their parents at the border while they're wearing a shirt that says, I just got an abortion. Exactly. Well, no, that was, yeah, kids, yeah. 
you can't you and she a lot the majority of people man they don't have a mind to think for themselves so, well there's a lot of hypocrisy but but then again they would tell you not to talk about it like so now they try to like shut your voice down like oh how are you going to speak on it you eat meat you know what i'm saying like how are you going to speak about climate control when you're eating I, meat you know and like like they're trying to shut you down and like exclude you from the argument not messing up the climate why don't we holler at the oil industry why well, they try to that? interject. I'm not an expert on this. I just know a little bit just to throw it out there. But they try to say talking about like the uh, f the fumes and stuff from the cows. We have too many cows on the yeah. on the planet, you know, because yeah. of our we need to eat them and the, what we've I created. Think, Cowspiracy. I mean, yeah, you know, and I'm totally against the way that the mass farming that look, I was against this shit before it became popularized and trendy. Yeah. I started eating clean and started, you know, doing ethical things as yeah. far as my food is concerned. I didn't have a platform and go preach from a pulpit about how you should eat clean. I just was like, yo, me and my child, as for me and my home, this yeah. is how we gonna do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I think that humans have a responsibility to this earth to take care of it. We're the second most intelligent species in the earth, and I think we got, <laughs> I'm just playing. We gotta take care of the earth, man. I, I think we do, but the problem is, uh, we got to take care of ourselves. If we do what we're, remember I was talking to you on the phone, if we do what we're supposed to do in here, it's all going to pan out instead of worrying about out there. There's a Bible verse. Don't worry about the speck in your brother's eye when you have a log in your own, you know, and we're all guilty of it. It's always easier to point the finger and say, man, look at how fucked up he's doing that. Well, you know, I, you know we're pointing people to Christ and that, that inevitably, or maybe points people to the church. And I've heard the church people just make fun of the green movement and I've heard them say, well, this earth is perishing and this earth will be destroyed. And so no, we, it won't. there's we, a new earth. Yeah, I know. I, I've heard these Christians say this, though, and it really would turn my skin, man. You know what I'm saying? Boil my blood to hear them make fun of the green. You want to save the worlds. You're not even worried about saving your soul and all this kind of stuff. And they're like obese preachers, like making fun of your right. health and all that kind of because your body's going to be destroyed, too. You know, and they would just use that as an excuse where they could be unhealthy and stuff. Like, it's crazy. Right. And I've heard uh, a man's defiled of what comes out of his mouth, not what goes in. They'll use that. Right. So yeah. trust me, I know about is, that one. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, man, look, again, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will follow. And I think that applies on every level. I think it applies on if your shit is right in here and you're doing right for you and your family and your household and yeah. you're doing everything with God in mind, you're going to be ethical. You're I don't know. Be I don't know. I'm going to throw, I'm going to be the devil's advocate again. I'm with you. That's, that's what, I, that's my calling. I know that's your calling, right? Take care of the spirit. Do you, you know, helping people connect with God, but there's humanist people who don't believe in God, who believe that it is going to be, we're, we're going to be saved through human ingen ingenuity. One of the best God rest his soul. I think we need to bring back somebody needs to take this stuff over, but Jock Fresco with the Venus project who has all of the, this technology and where, you know, you can build your house to where it's energy su sufficient and the, the water that you wash your hands with gets recycled into the, uh, waste water that you flush your toilet with and it goes into the community garden and it kind of gets into some weird like socialism which was kind of like a biblical like a, like uh, under a righteous rule I think socialism would work but he's like this community aspect and this guy I don't think he even believes in God you know uh, but to hear I human ingenuity how we have to be smart we have to progress together and not think that we're going to be saved or whatever so they're making advances like they're they're here like if we would listen to what this guy was saying um looking at the native americans in the way that they were like socialist or whatever and there's people who come up with all type of rebuttals or that's why they were destroyed or they had a bad border policy or whatever but i'm like i listen to that and i think about it and look at the early church and how they brought everybody everything to the disciples apostles feet and they distributed it as needed i'm i'm saying this and this should make sense why do me and my neighbor both need a shovel dude so, I, I don't even use my shovel you well this is mine it's it's disconnected everyone wants everything for themselves you know i feel you you know i gotta I, ride lawnmower and he wants to ride lawnmower and then his neighbor wants to ride look y'all can use mine 
here's where really the problem is the company that makes them riding lawnmowers is like we want to sell two of them to all y'all exactly one that's the capitalism though there and was something the called product obsolescence where i could where you know back in the day our great grandfathers they didn't have big disposable razors guess what they had one razor and they would shave and it was time to to, to get another razor what they do they Sharp. sharpened it well the the companies have said look we we're only selling them one razor what if we can sell them razors every week every two weeks let's give them disposable razors so now they're continually coming back it's like hold on you can kill two birds with one stone and like i feel like that's i feel like that's capitalism man that's like you know what i'm saying we're not progressing because of it but there's have you ever heard, looked into that at all it's like i said before bro it's the hearts of men it's the rich white guy behind the scenes man it's that old white man <laughs> you know it's just all we can we do have the power though you know where our power resides our what we buy if we stop buying look i i this is my great example subway was putting something from a rubber tire in their sandwich years ago and it was just when i was first starting to really be healthy and i'm people are like yeah subway's healthy and i'm like man you know they put that tire in the bread though and they're like, well, what can we do about it? There's nothing. This is all the common thing. There's nothing we can do about it. There's not. Let me go give you my money, but there's nothing I can do about it. Well, there's something you can do about it. Stop buying it. Because guess what? Motherfuckers stop buying it. And you know what Subway did? They released a public statement. We are so sorry. We removed that from our bread. Yeah. Now, now, if someone died from it and some kid got, you know, whatever, some disease and uh, people were getting sick, they wouldn't care. It would, they would say like, oh, you know, it's, that's, a, that's, you know, we're, we're looking into it. We're looking into it. But you, FDA approved. Money, yeah. you mess with their money, bro. One, yeah, week, um, one week of people stop shopping at Walmart, things are going to change. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to... Uh, no lagful in the chat another uh, fact checker for me i always say that i always say product obsolete right but it's in they've uh, corrected it but it's planned obsolescence obsolescence planned obsolescence which is pretty much the same thing planned obsolescence or built-in obsolescence uh, obsolescence in industrial design and economics is a policy of planning or designing a product with an artificially limited useful life <laughs> so that it becomes obsolete after a certain period of time. Our cars, our everything, dude, like it's designed to break down so that you can keep coming back to, to get more where you have to keep coming back, right? And I think he went and used the re re restroom. He had to go to the bathroom, so I'm here. Again, playing obsolescence. Um, your car, we were, uh, there's a, something on YouTube we watch, and this is, everybody remembers Chris Hansen, right? from uh dateline nbc and th so now they're they're doing this new thing where they they try to catch people and they expose people or whatever but chris hansen is doing this this new thing where they call out um people who, like the ac repairmen and they'll go out to a perfectly fine air conditioner unit and they'll pull the fuse out they'll just reach in there's a fuse there's just you pull it out to where it's just not making connection and all you have to do is push it in and it starts working again, right? Um, so they'll 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 do that to the product, to the, the AC unit, and then they'll call a repair company to come out and look at it and they'll see what it is, but they'll try to finagle them into buying a new unit. Something that could be fixed by just simply pushing in the, the fuse that would actually make it to, you know what I'm saying, reconnect. It doesn't even cost anything. They'll try to tell them because the person doesn't know how the coils work and rusting and they'll come up with these different scenarios and try to sell them a new unit for like five thousand dollars. Or hey, this is gonna be a big job for these new units, it's gonna cost you five thousand. Where they could just simply push it in and the person may have five more years of use out of their air conditioner. But um <coughs> capitalism, you have to get that that sale. Agreed. I'm going to do what I can. If we both have something we're selling, I remember 
then this is just shot out just remembering i remember we used to buy weed back in the day you know in in louisiana from a, some brothers it was the only black guys in the neighborhood and they sold weed how ironic right but they would come into the white neighborhood and they would sell us weed and they would fight over they would push each other and they would say hey man mine's fatter and so and so he may have put a little bit more bud in it right in the weed and like oh he's like and they push him now buy mine buy mine and they would fight over who was going to get the sale right that's capitalism right instead of working together let's just teach us how to grow weed i don't know i'm just throwing it out there just as an, as an example right product hey, obsolescence since, since you're talking about weed what, what, how, you, how you feel about weed? I, 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 I'm biased because I can't. It messes with my body. Like, I think I've kind of, like, probably burnt out some THC receptors in my brain at using it when I was young so much uh -huh. as a kid that uh, I had some weird stuff going on with my body. So now every time I smoke it, it, like, goes straight to my brain and, like, messes me up. I can't breathe. I have panic attacks. My heart's racing. Just even oh, one wow. hit, the THC enters my body. And it just, it does my, I know we have cannabinoid receptors in the brain, right? That's something, but, um, my body, I can't produce, I can't, it doesn't process it like it used to. And I think it's when my brain was still forming as a kid in, in my adolescence that I messed something up. So I'm kind of biased as far as me per pertaining and I've tried to, and even in my adult life, I've tried to, and I just can't, you know, and I have friends who do it, you know, and, um, but I think it's a good reason that I can't cause I would smoke it. I would, I, I'd be smoking right now. I mean, that's what I did. It, when I was a teenager, I used it as escapism, right? And now, and I've done a whole interview about this, but like Christ is my escapism. You know what I'm saying? Like that worship, you're talking about lifting my hands. That's my escapism. When I'm overwhelmed and I don't know what to do, I would smoke. You know what I'm saying? When I, Because it took me to another place outside of reality. Like this was a safe haven when I would smoke before I knew God. You know, and that was always my form of escapism. It always, everything was okay in that realm. When I would, when I would hit that, that joint, the blunt, whatever, everything was okay. And I just loved it. It made all my problems disappeared. So now, like for me, it, that's the equivalent of the presence of God. Because literally God delivered me from that. When I got born again, like he became my safe haven. He became my strong tower. When things are getting rough, Father, I need you, God, right now. And I would just, I would literally go into a similar place euphoria things are different my body is being renewed and literally we have the ability to tap into that realm whenever we are whenever and so for me that's the equivalent right and we have we know people who you know when things get rough they smoke a joint and it's for them and i don't judge anybody but that's where i'm at i can't maybe i'm by and I, I admit that maybe i'm biased because i can't but I thank God because he knows how addictive my personality is that, you know what I'm saying? That now I'm addicted to the presence of God. And now that's where I go. That's just me. Go ahead. I know you smoke. I've seen video. I've seen pictures and video. <laughs> yeah, pictures but I, and video. I don't, I don't I'm, you know, I'm hard on myself, bro. Like yeah. I try not to use anything for an escape. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I don't, I don't think I have an addictive personality. Um, I check myself, you know, if I see myself getting into too much, I check myself, you know, like yeah. uh, with anything, you know, mm -hmm. so for me, I don't, I, I don't use anything as an escape. My escape is music, actually, right. if I do something, it's, you know, um, and it doesn't necessarily escape me. It just kind of help me, you know, therapeutically vent my, yeah. my situation, yeah. uh, my thoughts. But for me, I was, I was thinking the opposite of the, you know, I know some people, and I think myself included, use it as an enhancement. An enhancement, you know. Styles P, one of my favorite rappers, says, uh, <laughs> "See, the blunt is the magic wand. I'm the magician." <laughs> now, granted, like I do not need to smoke to make music. Uh, sometimes I make better music when I do. Sometimes I don't. Uh, but no, man, it's you know, for me, it's a, it's definitely a, uh, you know, it's it. it Something at the end of the night when my kid goes to bed for me to say, you know what, I want to relax a little bit. I had a long day, you know, and I just want to relax and feel feel at ease, you know. So for me, it's one of those type of things. Um, once yeah. in a while, I say, hey, you know, I'm going on a hike. I want to enhance. It helps you connect, yeah. Yeah, it does, you know, for me. I never had 
uh, if it made me feel paranoid and panicky, I wouldn't want to smoke shit. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, I don't know. I'm just asking because they're about to make it legal here. Um, yeah, yeah. Recreationally in Illinois, you know. So, and I think just because you know I partake in it occasionally, uh, you know, doesn't mean that everybody should and could and uh, you know make it. I don't know. I don't really have like any. any I know. I, I tell you. I, I mean, I, I, weeds mess some of my friends up. Wow. Like, they're, like I can't talk to them. They're just like every yeah. time they 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 have no. They they're in another realm. No. Because they're always blowed. Right. And uh, and they're always. You, I mean, they'll come to prayer meetings when they're the only one, and they just they smell like weed. They're the only one high. A bunch of hanging around a bunch of church folks. We get ready to pray and seek God and they show up high or even drunk, you know, yeah, and think that it's okay. Which I mean, and I'm not against, I think it's a time and place for everything. But I don't think it's time to be high to prayer. I think you should be sober minded. Well, see, pray. those people would say what you just said, though. They use it as an enhancement. And I can't tell you how many times I know you have too. I smoke weed to talk to God. <laughs> uh, I disagree with that. But again, yeah. you know, I'm my own. And everyone could have their own thing. I don't force. I, the last thing I ever want to do is force my beliefs on someone. I'm just here to give my opinion and, you know, yeah. uh, build on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm giving mine but, too, I think. But I, but I can identify that mine's probably biased because I can't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah so the smart dust. No. <laughs> no, the mushrooms. <laughs> the mushrooms. <laughs> I mean, mushrooms are. I've had good and. I've never had a bad experience, I would say. I've never had a bad one, but I've had ones where, Uncomfortable. again, you know, I, I control the situation. So I'll see that the mushrooms will be trying to, you know, put these thoughts in my head and like, oh, oh yeah. this is going to happen. Or it's like, no, that's not going to happen, actually. Look, let's look at this tree. <laughs> I have a like, really connection to trees, when, yeah. especially if I eat some mushrooms or something yeah, about that connected. tree, man. Beautiful. Plugging back in with nature, this literally, it's like the way to do it. You know, they're like, I feel like they're walkie talkies or devices with the other side for us to, to tap in, you know, feeling, feeling connected, you know, for sure. man. Dude. But, um, but that's not a, I mean, that's not an everyday thing. I, I do enjoy microdosing, <clears throat> but that's not enough to like, just in, in, in looking at the health benefits from microdosing and, what it what the studies they're doing with psilocybin and curing depression and all types of things, man. So it's it's a beautiful um so you know, was, what it's been used as. So I was asking my other buddy, what is considered a microdose? Is it like a tenth of a gram, a point one, a point? I would three? say even anything less than a gram myself. Dude, if I ate say a half a gram, I feel that like intensely. I'm yeah. <laughs> Well, That's you know I what? Mean. I'm not sure. Um Fact checkers, somebody look it up. Garner, I know you're listening. How much is a microdose? Somebody Google it for me so y'all don't hear me typing. I've always wondered, you know? Yeah, well, I always heard it was less than half. And, and for me, it's a cap, a two caps, you know, just, just to get it in you. Caps? Wow. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about big caps. I'm talking about. No, I know, but two caps, I'm going to feel. Well, I mean, maybe mine wasn't as strong. It just depends. <laughs> you know, all this stuff really depends. Like, if you do a, a you know, a cap for somebody might might be that big, but then if you have right. little okay. caps and some st stems and like, okay. you know, I can feel it. Like I've done some really heartfelt podcast microdosing, and uh, you can wow. feel it. And I I, I get emotional. And it get, let you be like self re reflective, introspective. You know what I'm saying? That's the job of it to make you do that life review and that examination about your life. Like, hey, you're messing up, headed down the wrong path. Get it in order. Let's get let's let's make it happen. You know. I have a question. Yeah, yeah. What about the Mandela effect? Did, we probably that talked that about that a little bit um, uh, on the last one. But, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I've heard it's interesting. The one that gets me is the Shazam. Because <laughs> I really, I really thought that bad. Sinbad was, was in a movie called Shazam and played a genie. So... Well, the, the biggest one for me is the Bernstein Bears because I remember it being... The well, there's proof one. that it's both, though. So there could have been some type of weird, like... Uh, I, I don't I don't think that there is proof. No, no, no. They're, no, they're, they're holding books up, like 
in books and videos, I think. I've seen I've seen pictures anyway where they're like So I think, you know, I just want to say this because the album cover. I think CERN is the result of the Mandela not the result. CERN is the cause of the Mandela effect and I watched a very very intense video with about the did. Bible. <laughs> huh? No, 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 about CERN and what they're doing. And they got Gothard, which is their tunnel. And basically, it, you know, the Bible does say that the, the pit will be open. And, you know, I think that CERN is, I think that they're having, uh, they're merging dimensions somehow to let these entities through. Uh, and yeah. that's why I mentioned Gothard, which is yeah. the name of their tunnel in one of my songs. Um, I think that these other dimensional beings are, you know, maybe come for lack of a better word, demons, right. Yeah. Are coming through this opening CERN. I think CERN is so much more than anyone realizes. And it's actually the biggest thing on my mind for the past couple of years has been CERN and it's brushed off, but working with their sister laboratory, things were kind of exposed to me that, you know, and a lot of these shows, the new Spider-Man movie, did you see that with your kid? The cartoon um, one I did. The cartoon one. It was cool, right? Yeah, yeah. Based on CERN, okay? Based on CERN. Multiple right? timelines. Uh, that machine that yeah. they were going on at the end. True, that's, true. That's, I didn't even put two and two together. Now, yeah. now it, the list goes on for a long time. Because, with that movie? No, with CERN. The machine being in all the cartoons. and it, Dude, it's in all my kids' cartoons. Yeah. It's in all the movies. It's in... Uh, uh, what's that other uh, Stranger Things? That's that's remember that For thing sure. that they were doing. That's For like sure. CERN's yeah. machine, alternate and reality, they, and put and they were literally doing what you're saying, pulling demons through from through. For that the other thing, side, the, the so, upside down. Yeah, right. So this is all based like the root of it is. But see, like a lot of people don't look at CERN or even think to consider the reality or possibility of that. So when they do that, it's only people in similar shoes as mine who are catching this like wait a minute you guys keep doing that you guys keep doing that you know what i'm saying with all these and there's actually a, an array of movies that i can keep shooting off but yeah. i can't remember in this exact moment but it's very common theme man so yeah. i don't know that's that's yeah that's an interesting one man um but yeah it's I'm I'm with it. There's definitely um, throw this in really quick. Shout out to the the chat. Everybody says it's probably 0.2 grams as would be considered a microdose. Um, and and then other people are saying it does depend on the potency of the of it too. So shout out to uh, everybody who commented on that. Um, the weird thing. So I, the first time I heard, I had Bill Bean on here. Bill Bean. I I love Bill Bean. He's awesome. Um, but he was talking about the Mandela effect in the Bible, and we and he blew my mind. You know, and and I and it was an interview, and I was just trying to get get into it a little bit, and like, oh, really? You know, to act more interested than I was, but there was some some things that he mentioned, like you know, which they say is you know, what I'm saying the Mandela effect, which is I thought Mandela Man, Nelson Mandela was dead too, but um, the uh, the with the Bible, you know, the lion and the lamb laying down yeah, together. We've cool. always I seen that. But, you know, whether that's the Mandela effect or we're just getting Jesus is the lion and the lamb. And we've seen pictures of maybe those two together. But the scripture goes back and there's no mention of the lion and lamb. And right. I've always heard it quoted like that, too. When you go back and read yeah. it, it says the lion and the, well, the lamb and the wolf. The it wolf says the lamb. wolf. Right. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. That's kind of That's deep, cool. right? But I, but I mean, it's not even deep. The far if we're talking about the Mandela phase, the fact that we've changed what it meant and everybody's repeated it or quoted it. I don't know. Like it's pretty crazy. Like because remember, our parents and grandparents would have pictures even of of yeah. that and had that scripture on there, and we just always there's songs. I mean, there's Christian songs, but there's no yeah. mention of the lion and the lamb in the Bible laying together. That's crazy. <laughs> Or even in the same sentence. Yeah. It doesn't. So, yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, it's just little thing. And there was a bunch of other stuff he was talking about. Like, uh, he said, like, but, with the with the uh, transgender and gay movement, like, that uh, it says that man will be lying in a bed, same bed with a man. And he said that that was inserted. It's like, man would be lying in bed with his another or something like that. He thought it, it was, like, inserted. <laughs> Have you heard about that? Well, here, 
there's actually because for me, you know, my mind goes to well, if if for example, Shazam never existed. If it did exist and it changed, how could it? How could that happen? And the answer was, well, if alternate universes kind of merged with each other through so what CERN does do you know what they do they collide subatomic particles yeah, at the, the speed of light and the hadron collider that, is the name of the machine right yeah the large hadron collider which they're building a new one now that's three times larger um, which hey and, uh, and also going back just another movie reference contact where jody foster was falling they were trying to contact aliens and she fell and she, in the, the big machine that was spinning you remember the movie right and the big machine is spinning and she was able to go in and experience another timeline or realm uh, in the middle of that. But when people looked at her, it was like she just fell. But she was able to kind of like almost time travel or it seemed like a very long time. But go ahead. So many movie references and, yeah. and shows, my son's cartoons. I mean, dude, it's in the old old Avengers from like 15 years ago. There was like cartoons of the Avengers. Like the, they were really dark and like they're coming through portals too, like old Spider-Man. But um, what was I saying before though? <laughs> I'm sorry. I threw you off. Hmm. Oh, so there's actually a video on YouTube and it really is good. There's actually, there's a preacher on it. So the video has different parts to it. It's like two hours. And one part is this preacher talking, man, and this dude busts it down and he's the one who basically is saying they have creatures you know demons coming through they're opening gates they've opened the pit you know the bottomless pit and they're trying to get these creatures through and blah 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 but the explanation is okay if that was changed right if it, it did say for example the lion will lay with the lamb how is there no Bible on this earth anymore where you can find that at? Because that doesn't make sense. Well, it does make, it could make sense if basically alternate realities merged and now we live merged into a reality where it did never exist one time. So it's called, I say all that to lead me into the science behind it actually, which used to be science fiction. Now it's science, like everything else. It's called quantum effect, the quantum effect. And the video is called CERN's, uh, it's called CERN's quantum effect is the Mandela effect. So in the quantum um, mechanics, somehow, which I'm not a fucking quantum physicist, so I don't understand it, but somehow there is a legit scientific explanation that says if we were to merge our reality with an alternate universe and some of the things got changed, tiny one fraction of a percentage of the reality changed, there would be these subtle differences that you would see you know, but people might not catch them because some of the people that exist may have been that version of themselves from the old universe. So they wouldn't notice it wouldn't click in their mind. So it's this big, I mean, definitely a huge conspiracy. Theory, yeah. Right? Well, let's, let's just tie this comment in, uh, on the, on the chat. Adam Starseed Bay says this goes into timelines and raising your vibrations to a different layers of perceived heavenly realms. So here's something that I find interesting. The scripture says that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places like right now. Part of me believes that we in the new age in the spiritual community, we're talking about the higher self. And there is a you that exists somewhere in the ethers or in heaven with Christ in heavenly places. That's maybe almost acting as an avatar watching us what we're doing now. And it knows our life's goal. And it's almost just kind of watching us this thing unfold and uh and we have the access to we draw in, in faith we draw in, in christ we we draw power from an unseen realm of of, a, of of an us that exists that's perfect we see that per faith is is having the belief in something that uh, tangibly we can't we don't know how it's going to happen we don't see it i feel broke busted disgusting no, nothing's going in my favor but I know that God is working all things out for my good. And we begin to confess that. We begin to create it. And so I'm saying that to say like Adam is maybe saying that we're able to pull that into our reality. Like I'm supposed to I'm supposed to swing on you. And usually I would. 
but there's a higher power and there's a, a, a me that knows what's better. It's the Holy Spirit is conviction of God. And I'm going to choose that path. And I'm going to pull that into this reality. And I'm not going to swing on you. I'm not going to have those. I'm not going to suffer those consequences. I'm going to suffer the consequence of walking in love and forgiving you. And, sin, and hence there like creates a rip. What if I would have swung on you? What if I would have cheated on my wife? What if I would have left, walked out on my kids? You know what I'm saying? And where that can go, that'll keep you up at night. But uh, you know what I'm saying? And so we're drawing this energy from a, 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 an us that exists somewhere else, man, that, that the higher self, I believe, is out there with Christ. And I'm saying that it mirrors Greek theology. Right. That we exist with the planets and we are an emanation of the solar system. Right. Of, of, of the uh, of the gods experiencing themselves in human forms throughout the, the houses of the Zodiac. And man, it gets into some really deep stuff that has been discussed, you know, before this conversation has been had. But I think it's I'm saying that it may not be so far outside of the realm of even the Bible to even have the conversation because some people are here. Oh, that's throw it out the, the window you know yeah it was just something I, I <laughs> he's like yeah you lost me with that crazy. you lost me true nah did i lose you come on give me can we got no, the no, people no, here. Go no, ahead. No. Uh, i'm i just wanted to bring that stuff up because that's you know that mandela effect stuff is what kind of you know, I started looking into that. And again, I'm not going to sit here and say it's 100% for sure it's real. But what I saw something that said a couple couple weeks ago, it said, uh, it gets real when you when you really realize everything gets real when you understand that you're fighting against Satan. I think I told you that on the phone, like Satan himself, like, that's when the people that are like, oh, is there really child trafficking going on? Is there really these white men behind the scenes with all this, you know, money that are, yeah. And well, there's some, there's something and it's the, the, what, what it leads back to the head honcho at the backside, yeah. it's Satan himself. Yeah. And when you know that you're like, wow, we really are battling against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places, not against flesh and bone. Like the word says. Now, on the other side, you know, I used to be a, a, into the darkness and like all oh, the power of darkness, right? And then I'm like, that darkness trembles at the name of Christ. Imagine the presence, you know, not to mention every time, I don't know, I don't want to say every time, but I believe every time Satan's mentioned in the Bible, he always comes before God and asks for permission, you know? Uh, maybe not in the garden. He didn't ask for permission, but with Job, he asked for permission. You and know, does he, he asked for permission too? Yeah, and he. I love what Jesus said to him. He he goes, you know, <laughs> I'll give you all this stuff and whatever. And Jesus, remember, he takes him up to the mountain and he goes, "It is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God." <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. So, you know, it's, I, I, you it's, know, I actually, uh, that's w what my new book is about. Um, at least the first half of it, uh, angels, de demons, spirits, and the sovereignty of God. Uh, and it talks about the sovereignty of God of, of like the Satan figure, uh, the, the, um, uh, negative force, what we would call in the world that exists, but it has to like petition God to do stuff. You're right. Right. It is like not going to beat up God or overthrow God's children. Like he has to have permission. You know, and I go into a lot of detail about this evil spirits being sent out from God. And he knows like he knows what's up. God, there's nothing. God doesn't turn a blind eye to something. There's demons and things that serve a purpose. Right. And there's consequences for making packs with demons. And, and they, you know, there's I go into all that stuff. But, um, man, there's just so much to, to touch on even with that. But anyway, I touch on that in, in my book. And one thing that. The, the Hadron Collider seems like something really big and oh, it's crazy technology or whatever, but let's break it down to even a smaller level um, where people are uh, doing seances and sacrifices to foreign gods to pull them through the to rip Make holes in veils and pull spirits through. I mean, they do child sacrifices, animal sacrifices to appease the gods. And as that spirit crosses over to the other side, they believe that it creates a rip that they're able to kind of like stranger things in a Hadron Collider, just in a small way, pull spirits into our reality uh, by doing that. 
yeah. And that's, and then, that's, that's definitely <laughs> happening. And, and well, I think we did mention it the other day, but all of this, the conspiracy stuff we've been talking about for years and the Bilderberg and the old white men and what they do and having sex with children and all this, now it's coming out. Now Epstein, <laughs> you know, gets caught, you know, and then outs himself or gets taken out most likely the second so he won't tell on everybody um but this stuff we've been talking about for years <laughs> is now coming to light man yeah and that's not just on this i mean that's round the board i mean science fiction has become science you know um conspiracy theories have become truths um f- fantasies have become facts with space travel and just all you know like that's why you got to keep an open mind. And that's why we're so far past being at a point where it's like, Oh yeah, that's so far fetched. Like what's far fetched anymore. They can read your mind. You know, they know, I mean, there's things I, that I've experienced that I won't say on the podcast because I don't want it to attribute to someone's perception of me, but I know they're real. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's just, you know, at this point, man, what, <laughs> It's, everything's just pretty wild, you know. I mean, we got uh, two, we got two comments here, um, saying, uh, "Does anybody remember the show Quantum Leap?" And then Adam Starseed says the show Sliders. Those were both two shows back in the '90s that were about jumping timelines and and portals and stuff like that too. And I tell you what, I, there was a uh, interesting um, video that I watched. I'm trying to get this guy on the show. I've been trying to do it for years, but. Speaking about Quantum Leap, this guy tied in that every actor that their characters like are related from each movie and things that they've portrayed and they show you how it links all together, like in like forming out this one narrative or whatever, like Tom Cruise in this movie and then Tom Cruise in that movie, how it's like the same person. And like there's shows and movies that we watched that we didn't even know were sequels to other uh, stuff because they, we wasn't told like, I'm I, obviously one of them that just came out was um, the movie split, which was a prequel, I believe to um, the other um, movie in, by uh, M night Shyamalan. And then they just did the third one. And you didn't find out to the very end. And there's just so much of people that you didn't know were like continuations or the stories are recycled from the gods of old, you know, and it's in the movies. Like it's not, there's nothing new under the sun, right? That's why the scripture has so much wisdom. It's like the book of Enoch, they're retelling those stories again through transformers, which is a blatant one, the rise of the fallen, that there's these entities who are in from another planet who are in chains down at the bottom of the ocean and under the volcanoes and in the center of the earth. And they were brought back to life after a certain period of time. Their chains were loosed and it shows them coming from the bottom of the ocean and these machines coming back. And the name of the movie is Rise of the Fallen. And they all meet around the mount and like Mount Hermon. You know what I'm saying? And all this stuff is taken it's plagiarism, really, and it's these stories that are just retelling themselves over and over throughout everything, whether How, they know it or not, which is the, the weird thing I want to know. They uh, like, know, first you think dude. Everything, they, all, all you think I they're mean, really that smart, they know all this stuff, they probably they I'm might. Not that, I'm not saying the actors know, but someone somewhere, the director. The writer. The directors, I think it's someone who is influencing the writer or the director or working with them, a silent partner. It's like, you know, the silent people are the ones that are running it, man. Even behind Michael Bay, like it might not be Michael Bay. It may be the demon in Michael Bay's closet. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But no, these these stories, man. They know. They know what they're doing. Well, I mean, going back to Hollywood, you know, Jordan Maxwell talks about how, you know, the Holly, the word Hollywood that the the ancient Druids would would make their magical wands out of the Holly tree. And therefore you have the Hollywood. That's how he ties everything back in the etymology. My guy was just sending me info on that. And I was like, wow. And a lot of it's a lot of stuff, man. It's not a coincidence. That's what I'm saying. Like just two minutes ago, we were when I was we were talking, I'm saying it's not a coincidence. People need to stop giving the benefit of the doubt. And 
and saying like, yeah, that's just a coincidence. Give the benefit of the doubt that it's not a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Flip sides, like after so many things have been shown to come out, like why even be surprised anymore? You know? Exactly. And that's the conversation we had the other day is like, once you know, I think it does take conspiracy theories to, to wake people up. I was big on 9-11. I watched the movie Fahrenheit 9-11, and it just gave me this empathy and being, being able to see things from their perspective and then studying. And I was into some crazy, fearful agenda type stuff. It really had me, it had my wife in panic mode, really, too, because I'm like telling her about the FEMA camps and the FEMA trains and the FEMA coffins. And they have coffins that can fit 20 people in them, you know, and all this crazy stuff. And they have, tra- they, there's a train called the FEMA train and FEMA owns it. And there's, there's handcuffs all, all within the train and they're going to round everybody up. And like that became my truth and my reality, but it woke me up to like a higher consciousness. And like, that was something that kind of woke me up to start asking deeper questions about life and reality and and there's other people who are listening to new it may be the school shootings it may be mandela effect you know and it, it, the conspiracy theories might not even be true but it's being used to wake them up to ask the bigger questions and you know, awakening something within them to stand up for righteousness and for truth you know amen well the word conspiracy theory always kind of made me laugh because you know all major studies are theorized by people who conspire the epstein thing uh alex jones been yeah alex jones been talking about epstein and they deplatformed him they made him look like a crazy man he been saying that and look what happens he's got a secret island where he has sex with children did you see his picture in his house of bill clinton and drag (laughs) i think you didn't hear that Google it, bro. It's fucking, the picture is hilarious. So he's got a picture when you walk in his house. I think it was his house in New York. You go to the right. It's a picture of Bill Clinton dressed in drag. And it's like a painting. That was real that, something he had hung up? You think it's real? It kind of looks yeah, fake. That was, the news. that was in like the actual news news, like WGN News or some shit. Bill Clinton in a drag dress with heels I see it. i'm showing it on the screen now <laughs> at least i thought that I was shit was funny like they must have been real good friends for him to have that and they must have did some weird shit together you know they all they all have i mean when you look at the whole um but that's what i'm saying how is it still like a, a debate how is it still in question i mean the unthinking majority man but you, you know, gotta they, put the food inside of their mouth, chew it up for them with their jaw, and have them sw- and push it down their throat before they finally realize the food's there. You know, it's like yeah, Bush was at the uh, what's the thing with the owl, Bohemian yeah. Grove. He was there. Hank. He spent this whole weekend with gay porn stars, like bodybuilder gay porn stars. Like these dudes are into some crazy stuff. They really are, right? Um, it's it's the truth is stranger than fiction, man. It's crazy. Even yeah. even when we think we just like we think we're blowing each other's minds with this kind of there's so much more. We don't even know. We just know what they uh, have allowed to get out. Like some of the stuff they've done, he probably would have been killed if he would have made a painting of it. You know what I'm saying? Like in, right. in some of these deep level secret societies, whether it's the Mason, whether Masons, whether it's the Skull and Bones, there's things that they do. They make you do despicable, despicable acts and they take pictures of you so that if you go outside of the order if you do things they, they'll they release them there's like something a masonic kiss i'm not i don't want to go into it but there's things that they make you do and um they threaten you not just you take my life my life is nothing but they'll they'll repay your your family your generations not just your children but we have people set up who are going to make sure that your children's children pay for what you did like then what do you do? Do you just tell on everybody and just expose them? No, your children's children, they're going to follow your, your, your whole genealogy and make sure that they, that they pay for your sins, man. Look, there's some deep stuff out there, bro. It really is. There is, there is uh whether you think it's Satan is a Satan, a, a actual being or just the the force of negativity embodied in the world. Jesus is love manifested. If love became a person, that's what Jesus was. So the opposite of that has to exist too, right? Maybe there's a Satan figure, which is the, the embodiment of all things despicable, 
that exist and, and people choose to worship it and make packs with it and draw energy from it. Just like we draw energy from Christ. There's people who would say, you know what? I need something outside of Christ. I don't like that narrative. I don't like God, you know, and so they have to go with the alternative. And that's that's literally happening. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I got to wrap this up, man. I got some stuff I need to get to. Um, but, you know, I definitely appreciate your time. It's always it's always an, an honor to sit here and chop it up with you. I'm sure we could go on for, for another hour or two, you know, just I think we talked about a lot of different stuff, man. Yeah, your new album, man, is good. It is good. Uh, again, the, the production on it's good. And just as you, I think, I feel like you would, you you at least mention uh, a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today uh, on on your album. But then again, it's a themed album, so that where you you kind of wrap it all up and say, look, this stuff is real. There's a devil. There's bad stuff. Where we're headed, you know. Choose this day who you will serve. Um, but you wrap it you wrap it up and give give glory back to God and say that look through Christ is how we find strength. So it, I definitely. Uh, feel it's a themed album that way and you did a really good job so I'll, I'll, i'm i'm vouching for it everybody make sure y'all go um and i don't listen to a lot of new music anymore people but even my even my 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 close friends who put out stuff but i did listen to this album and i rocked it and took notes and uh it's good stuff man make sure y'all go check it out it's it's on everywhere that uh music is sold what we've become by spirit of truth y'all go check it out make sure you hit it up any other links you want to promote I gave them earlier, just my YouTube, Spirit of Truth Official, my Instagram, Spirit of Truth Official. Uh, I do got a Facebook artist page. It's Spirit of Truth 13. I'm not really active on it, but if Facebook's your thing, you could, you know, follow me on there, whatever. I post shit once in a while. Um, and I also have another album that's already, it's actually an EP. Um, it's called Keys to the Truth. And this is the first time I've said it to, to anyone. So I'm just kind of throwing it out there. It's it's uh, with a good friend of mine from from our original rap group, which was called All Player. Um, you know, we, we, I guess, lost touch for many years, but he came back in the picture and he's very talented. His name's Keys. You know, that's why we call it Keys to the Truth. And uh, it's definitely different from what I just dropped. It's completely different. And it's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be coming out probably at the end of the year, early next year. So... Keeping it moving, man. Yeah. And I got a track with Truth Seeker coming up too. And if y'all didn't hear that, I'm gonna be on that EP. <laughs> <laughs> Send me a laid back track, and I'm 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 itching to get on something. I don't feel led to do anything on my own right now. I've got so much other stuff that I'm working on, courses and books and all that kind of stuff. But I do feel like writing a song, but not my own. So if you want to send me over something, I definitely would feel like lacing it up for real. All right. Cool, cool. All right, brother. I enjoyed it, man. The album is good. And uh, yeah, it's been too long, but I think we got it in, man. I think we, we covered a lot of ground on this one. And, you know, I, I don't really get into a lot of the dark conspiracy stuff anymore, but there's people who love it, man. They're just getting into it. And there's people who love that stuff. And, you know, to act like it's not there, I think is a, dis, a, a disjustice as well. And well, I, think at this, I think at this point in what I'm doing with the music and I'm transitioning again right now, but with that album, it's it's a pivotal point because it's not that I'm trying to highlight that. I'm trying to highlight, yes, it's there. You know, it's real and y'all need to be aware of it. But guess what? As powerful as it is, because when I first learned about it, I'm like, damn, this shit's powerful. I'm going to ride with this, you know. But there's something more powerful that it surrenders to, you know. And that's really where I want to go with this music is to to let people know, like, this is what we're up against and this is who we got on our side. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, you got heaven fighting with you, man. Heaven's army. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. We need to talk about that more. See, that, and this, that, that's why we exist, because so many people talk about the bad stuff, and they believe in demons, and they believe, watch Stranger Things, and all of this demonic. But what about our side? What about the, the heavenly host? What about the seraphim? What about the cherubim? Where are they at? They're not just sitting back letting this stuff go down. They've been protecting us since the beginning. They have their hand in this stuff too. And we've been privy to see and study and, and understand this stuff. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to counterbalance that stuff. So appreciate it, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Let your life shine, light shine, bro. Love you, brother. All right. Peace, peace, much peace. love. Spirit of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, check out his new album because it is, it is good. It's good stuff. Um, very apocalyptic sounding. Um, 
and and definitely if you haven't seen the the music video that we did for I am look up the official music video for I am it's that track has gotten a, a ton of plays but uh the music the main music video that's another one where I was talking about being throttled like it doesn't it's hard to find it so you got to search it's out there look for it um I am featuring spirit of truth and the voice and myself so make sure you check that out I'm going to jump in here some of these comments right quick uh, Deb Casey says they also contain six fingers in some of his paintings. Wow. Some of the paintings having six fingers. Um, everybody's like amazed that we're still going. It's been what? Almost three hours. Almost three hours. Steven says, hey, y'all, in Antarctica, there is also hidden entities there. Don't forget the place. Uh, uh, the place Antarctic land, like True Seeker says, the seas slash oceans. Yeah. It's some uh, interesting stuff, man. And then when, but there is no end to this. Like there's always more. Just when you thought you've exhausted yourself, you find out something else. So that's why, again, like, you know, your your pursuit changes. You know, you stop marching, you stop protesting, and you start you start bettering yourself. You start raising your vibration. You start understanding your hand in this too, and what you can do. Do we march? Do we change legislation? I don't think so. Some people think you do, you know, and they're trying that. But I, I really don't think I really don't think so. Um, uh, and we look at all this stuff and they talk openly about demons and the dark side and all of that kind of stuff. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I, I'm, I'm reminded of the story in the scriptures where uh, Elisha prayed for the young man. Elisha was um, they were being uh, hunted. And they woke up and there was a, a bunch of soldiers surrounding them and they were scared. Um, well, at least the young man was because he wasn't able to see. And he's panicking. He thinks they're about to die. And Elisha says, no, nah, man, don't freak out. Because there's something that a child of God understands is that you cannot be taken out until it's your time. They, they can't do anything. They can try. I mean, all throughout the scriptures, there was all types of brushes with death that uh, the disciples and prophets came into, but it, it wasn't killed, right? They were beaten and left for dead. Um, they were boiled. They were um, so so much stuff happened to these guys, but they were Paul bitten by poisonous snakes. But nothing could touch them until they carried out the will of God for their life. Elisha understood that. And so as a young man was panicking, this is recorded in the scriptures in the book of Kings. Uh, Elijah says, hold on. Greater are those, there are more around that are for us than those who are against us. Don't panic. And the guy's looking, he's like, there's nobody. It's me and you versus a small army. And he said, hold on. He lays his hands on him. He prays for him. Suddenly his eyes were open and he was able to see the chariots of fire all throughout the mountains and all of these chariots. Now we know what the chariots are in the scriptures. We said they are the angelic armies, the host of heaven, the chariots of fire. And he prayed for him. It opened the eyes of his understanding and he was able to see into the spirit what the truth was. Faith was made visible for him because Elijah prayed for him and allowed him to see it. There are more that are for you than those that are against. I know we question people when they say an angel showed up or I seen this, but for some reason, the demons, the ghost and all of those things, we just believe it. We believe that, you know, uncle so-and-so visited you. And, but when we talk about an angel from heaven coming, it's hard to hard for some people to, to, uh, believe it. And people are just drawn to the darkness. I mean, there's horror movies and things like that seem to sell more and be more popular than the angelic movies that come out now, the Christian movies or whatever the case is that talk about the spiritual forces of light. But that's what we do in our music. And obviously I get comments all the time on my YouTube videos and they're like, man, you should have a, such a larger following, man. I, the song changed my life and I can't believe it only has 20,000 plays. You should have a, a bigger following. You got to understand people are drawn to the darkness, man. We are countercultural. Like we're, we are th the light of the world. And, you know, so this isn't like the popular choice. The Bible talks about the narrow path. It is the path of righteousness. It is the path of light, killing, destruction, sleeping around, like, you know, all of this stuff. That's the wide path that leads to destruction. 
the path of, of self-fulfillment and get, getting dying with the most toys is he who wins. That's when we talk about these, the evil elite who are behind the scenes, that's who we're talking about. But there's a narrow path that the believer is called to walk. And it's a hard path because it seems like you're alone. You're not alone. Sometimes it feels like you're nobody's walking beside you. Well, they're in front of you and behind you just because the path is narrow. Greater are those who are, who are for you than those who are against you when you understand who you are. And there's a reason that it's not popular. Because then if it was, if it was popular, if it was easy, then everyone would do it. Which goes back, I mean, it's all throughout the scriptures we see um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know, the three Hebrew boys who wouldn't bow to the idols of the day. Like, look, bow down and worship the idol. So they erected, Nebuchadnezzar erected this statue and made everybody worship the image of the beast for, for their time. That was their beast. That was their political system. That was their king. That was their ruler making unjust laws to say, look, I know you follow Yahweh, but today you're worshiping this. You could worship Yahweh and this. And they said, no, we serve a jealous God. He's jealous about, you know, who, who we worship. He loved, he wants our affection. And he said, no, you're going to bow down to worship. So they refused to worship the idol that was constructed. So they said, okay, we'll throw you in the fire. We'll make an example out of you. Just in case any of these other people want to rebel and they want to follow Yahweh as well, we'll burn them too. And it, so it says that they threw him in the fire and they turned the fire up exceedingly hot. It says seven times hotter than it would usually be. And they got it really hot, right? And they put him in there and they weren't burned. And they're freaking out because they're trying to kill these people and make an example. But it said there was a fourth in the fire, one who looked like the, uh, as unto the son of man. And it was Christ. It was the angel of the Lord who stood with them and protected them in the midst of persecution. Daniel in the lion's den, again, standing up to the oppressors of the day. Christ was with them. The lions come up to him. They thought the lions were going to devour him. The lions became his friends. The Bible says, I will make your enemies your footstool. There is nothing to fear. He got this. We don't know how it's going to work out. It's wicked. It's dark. But he got this. He got it. He's going to make a way where there is no way. That's what he does. That's what he does. He, he, he loves the opposition because he gets to shine. He takes those who the world has rejected. He said, I want y'all. I know they looked over you, God. I want y'all. Like if you was to go make a basketball, go pick basketball, you know, and usually we, we shoot basketball all the time. And it's the, 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 the people who aren't the greatest, they get picked last. But Christ will come up and see, okay, y'all got all the all-stars. I want them. They're on my team. And that's the one Christ is called because you know what? I can work with them. You guys have everything figured out. You guys have went to school. You're well studied. These guys are going to honor me with their hearts. They, I can trust them. I can build them up and mold them. And I can use them for greatness. That's how God works. He's got it all figured out. And it's the, it's the narrow path. It's the narrow path. When you're going through the desert, which we all have to go through it, it's the wilderness. It's a small uh, sect of people. We go through it. God is positioning, positioning us to go through the wilderness. I was reading the scriptures today and the first thing I just, I read it and the first verse I read stood out to me. I read Matthew chapter seven, Matthew chapter eight this morning. And it said, Jesus comes down from the mountain and there was a great multitude there to meet him. A great multitude. The mountain represents your glory. The mountain represents um, being elevated. Everyone's there. When you're on the mountaintop, when everything's going good, everybody's here. Hey, Jesus comes down from the mountain. Everybody was there. When it was time to stand for righteousness at the end of the day, when he went to the cross, they ran. He left them by himself. And even Peter, like his he poured everything into Peter. Peter said, look, I'm going to be with you to the end. He's like, yeah, right. I'm going to be with you to the end, man. He said, no, you're going to betray me. You're going to deny me three times. And the story sh shows as Jesus went to the cross, Peter denied him. 
And when you're going through the wilderness, when you're out there, you feel like by yourself and you ain't got nobody there. You got to understand that God is still there. And this is like, you know, Christ should have like, you know what? Peter betrayed me. You're not worthy of the kingdom, bro. When I needed you the most, you was not there. Don't come back. But no. He saw the greatness inside of him. When, when he, he said, you're going to forsake me, but it's OK. There's greatness inside of you. And he says, upon this rock, upon this revelation I'm giving you, I will establish my church. And Peter went on to do great things for the name of Christ. And even though he denied Jesus and he was he made a spectacle and man, he probably felt like he wanted to die when that happened. But God still used him. God seen the greatness that was inside of him. And God sees that within us, man. How many of us have been at the bottom of the barrel, man? And there's so many other people that God can use and is using. And maybe he used you at one point. Maybe you were somebody who stood up for righteousness. Maybe you were a Jesus freak. Maybe you were this. Maybe you were that. But then it looks like because of circumstances and situations and the job and the trials and the cares of the world, you just become weary and well doing, man. And people have forgot about you. They've looked over you. But God is not done with you. Your story is not over yet. That when I was going through that stuff, and I still face it from time to time, the voice of the accuser, they call Satan the accuser of the brethren, and the voices come. We have to silence it and not agree with them and not repeat them voices, right? We stand in faith and in power of who Christ says we are versus what the enemy says we are, or the accuser says we are. And we go through that, but there was a scripture, man. It really changed it, changed it for me, but it says that if you will repent and you will utter worthy and not worthless words, I will use you as my mouthpiece. If you repent and utter worthy words, I'll use you. And man, well, I remember when I read that, I'm like, okay, I will. These little truths, trivial pursuits, they, be, be, they became my message. 9-11 became my message. You know, and all, all kind of things have become my message over the time. But it's like, I will return and make the main thing the main thing, which at the end of the day is Christ crucified. I'm nothing. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. I have nothing else to offer you. Anything that is good in me is because of Christ. I'm a piece of dung, as Paul says. He says, my righteousness of what I can do on my own accord is as filthy rags. You guys know what filthy rags are? Do you know what rags were used for then and now? It's speaking about a woman's menstrual cycle. He said, what I can do in good of my own uh, accord is as a pile of dirty rags. I have nothing in, in of me and of myself. There is no good thing. But Christ and the Holy Spirit dwelling with me, I can do all things. I am more than a conqueror. I am the righteousness of God created through Christ Jesus to do good works. If God before me, who can be against me? This is the greatness that is within us through faith. But there's the dichotomy because you have the animalistic nature. You have the you who is uh, just like in times past, you've messed it up many times. And if, if we leave it up to you, you're going to mess it up again. Me too. <laughs> but if we continue to walk in the spirit, the Bible says that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And the walking in the spirit is a daily thing. It is a daily submission. And we're learning we mess up. We drop the ball. We serve a God who is the God of grace and mercy. He is the God of forgiveness. The scripture says that grace and mercy came through Christ Jesus. And uh, I have to look at Jesus and what he brings to the table versus the other gods and the other traditions who bring a lot of cool stuff to the table. Let's just be honest. Like there's some cool things that the Buddhists bring. There's some good stuff that like, uh, you know, some hermeticism brings and all of these other, they bring some cool things to the table. And it's about man trying to pursue God. But Christianity, the difference is, is God is pursuing man through the person of Jesus. And that all of these cool things may have come through these other belief systems and understandings, but grace and peace came through Jesus Christ. Forgiveness the power 
to forgive sins. And God is pursuing us through that relationship. And God is not a respecter of, of any any person. And that's, I hope you get that on, on the, the narrow path and, you know, going through and, and God chooses the ones who, the, you know, I'm saying the throwaway kids, the people who the world has given up on. That's who God uses, man, because he sees the greatness inside of you. It's still there. Your best days are ahead of you. Believe it. Receive it. Pray. Find that, that spot where you can pray and uh, ask God to use you again. If you don't know him, if you never encountered that this God, ask him to come into your life. Ask him to prove himself. Show me who you are. I've heard who Truth Seeker says you are. I've heard who this guy says you are. I've heard who my pastor. I've heard who the Buddhists say you are. Who are you? He'll show you. He'll come to you and say, who do you say that I am? I know what they say. But who do you say that I am? He loves to prove himself, man. He's a he's a jealous God. He he he's he's fighting for your heart. He's fighting for your attention. He's fighting with your time. You know, that's like the biggest thing with all of the technology and all of the stuff. Michael Basham, good friend of mine, said yesterday that you know we're we are so caught up with whether it's doing podcasts and talking about God and whatever it is, just technology in general or creating or whatever that we we don't make time for God. We're talking about God, but we're not talking to God. Find that place, man, to make that altar wherever it is. That's where rejuvenation comes from. It's through the Spirit of Christ. No matter no matter who you are, everyone needs it. And you have a relationship with God through what Jesus has done for you. He's not a respecter of persons. He's not a man that he should lie, but that anyone can experience that. And so if we just, you know, talk for three hours about all of this crazy conspiracy stuff, which, you know, some of it's theory, some of it's truth. We don't know at the end of the day, but we, we had that conversation just to let you know, look, God hasn't forgot about you. Loves you with an everlasting love. God hates divorce. He would never, he would never disown you. He sees you through the eyes of Christ. And so, man, whoever you are, um, if you just need that touch, I'm just going to end this podcast with a prayer. I haven't done that in a while. And um, a lot of people say they, they love the prayers. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pray here at the end. You know, for, for many people, this is their church, man. This is this is the, the only um, interaction with, with fellowship is in the chat here on the side of the YouTube and, and Facebook and twitch this is the only church they got the only family they have they feel so um disconnected because they're so intricate they're different nobody believes like them right so with that i'm gonna say a prayer father i, I just thank you for your love i thank you for truth that came forth today god i thank you for just righteous conversation Lord, I just ask you that you use it, Lord, that you planted seeds, you watered it, and then that you bring forth the harvest. No matter what people are going through, Father God, that you are enough. You're more than enough. And when it looks like there is there's no way out of this situation, this season seems like it's taken forever. So many questions and doubts are coming that like to drown out your voice. Father, I just ask that you speak to the hearts of the people, Lord, wherever they are, whatever my friend is going through, speak to their hearts right now. Just let them know how much you love them to encounter your grace. Even I was talking about, Father, this place of, of surrender, Lord, this place of, of solitude that we can escape to, God, and know you as a strong tower, Father. I just pray that whoever's listening right now who do doesn't know you like that, they'll be able to experience that. This place that we go to, Lord, through prayer and intimacy with you. Father, they'll be able to experience you in the depths of that. When they get in this place where nothing else matters but you. The cares, the worries, the bills, nothing matters. The slander, the backbiting, the gossip, nothing matters. You. And in this place where you make all things new. We thank you, Father God, for the uh, cross, Lord, and what Jesus has done to reconcile us back to you, God forgiven our sins lord 
even as they are many, but you just continually forgiven our sins. We're just ever grateful. And I pray that our lives are changed and we walk in the newness of life, which is in Christ, Father God. Let your spirit move forth right now. Whoever's listening, whoever needs it, that person having that encounter have never felt it, presence of the Holy Spirit right now. Spirit of God, just to move. God, make everything right. You say, well, I've done too much. God, make everything right. I can't go back. Father, make everything right. You've called us justified, Father. You've justified us by faith. And this acts as just if, just as if I'd never done that. Pray you justify my friend right now through faith. Just acknowledge what he did upon the cross. Ask him to come into your life if you've done it. Ask for a renewal. Acknowledge him. Say, Jesus, you are Lord. I give you everything. Come into my life. Clean me up. Take my life. I lay it down at your feet. Peace, peace, peace in Jesus' name, God. Thank you. Amen and amen. Um, man, that's what it's about. That's the peace in the midst of the storm. That's where we draw from, that place of prayer, that ecstatic glory of God that we can encounter wherever we are, in the presence of your enemy, in the face of temptation. There's always a way out. The way out is just to respond like Christ. When just as Spirit of Truth mentioned in the scriptures where Jesus was led to the top of the mountain and he was tempted of Satan, he replied with the word of God. He went to that place where he knew where solace and serenity was, was in the word of God. Now, the word of God is the spirit of God. It is the breath of God. Now, you have the written word of God. You have the word made flesh, which is Christ. But you have the breath It's where we're all part of that. We all can return. So just even with that breath, just take a deep breath into your nostrils. Peace of God to rest upon you. Take in that breath and just acknowledge with gratitude. Let that breath be called gratitude. Peace of God, Jesus' mighty name. Amen. He's good, man. Work with them versus working against them. See how it works. See how it turns out. With that, I'm going to go ahead and say... Um, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I know there's a bunch more comments as I'm reading here now. Um, but, uh, man, thank you guys for hanging out and, uh, we'll do this again. I've got some awesome interviews lined up. I got the next two days. We're going to be doing some more interviews and they're going to be really good. I'm going to get to talk to uh, someone I've been looking up to for, um, a long time now. So this is really interesting with the podcast. I've been able to talk to people who I've looked up to in the faith and, uh, and seeing how people are reachable. <laughs> so I'm excited about these podcasts coming up. It's a lot of good stuff. So with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Thank you guys for supporting my work. Um, if you would like to partner with me and believe in the work that I'm doing, uh, please head on over to Patreon. I I've made it worth your while. There's a lot of stuff that, that you get by supporting my music, uh, School of the Mystics, online seer class, a bunch of cool stuff. Patreon.com backslash truth And no matter where you're listening, the link is in the description. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I look forward to uh, growing with you guys in a spirit of unity. Much love. Peace, peace. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.